only Jack Lou. We're gonna talk about things that may be new to you, but in reality, they are at the center of all of crypto and Bitcoin itself. How are you, Jack? How are you doing today? I'm great. Happy New Year's to you and your fam. Thank you. Thank uh, you. This is Happy New Year's. 2024. Thank you. Um, great to be on. I think we, we said we'd be on every six months and we're a little past six months now. So, so as you can see, I'm rocking the Rexy. This band of, of dinosaurs did some damage in 2023. And I have to say that I I'm very proud to own a Rexy. Um, very proud to be part of, of, of the group of people that went into BTC and taught people in BTC how to actually use and arbitrage data on BTC. I'm really happy to be part of the group of people that went into Dogecoin and did the same. Uh, happy to, New Year to you too, Jack. How, uh, how do you like the Rexy? Yeah, that, that's a great painting. Um, thank you, thank you. Artists did a good job. I think the Rexy is actually launched January 2nd. Uh, so just... 369 days ago uh, was the day of the Rexy sale. And uh, at that time, <clears throat> I hadn't gotten into Ordinal. So a lot of things played out during the last year. Uh, and it feels like, you know, it feels like hyper is something that was predicted and something that we were in the middle of. And I almost feel like now, uh, for some of us that are aware of it, uh, I feel like hyper is a finished event already. Okay, so um, when when you say those things, Jack, um, you you're a person. You're very much a futurist and a market maker. You understand the eventual outcomes of these technologies, and so for you, it's very easy to see the logical conclusions of where these technologies will lead us. For those watching, they look at the present moment and they take a snapshot in time, and they see that BSV is. Is where it's at. They, you know, at like fifty in market cap. They see Bitcoin Cash somewhere in the twenties, and then you see BTC completely dependent on externalities like BlackRock. So when you say something like hyper Bitcoinization's here, um, what do you mean by that? Because a lot of people don't don't see that. Yeah. So I mean, technically, it should have been here. The on January 3rd, 2009, right? Like in one perspective, if someone presents to you a Bitcoin white paper, here's the first block. Anyone that comes into contact with Bitcoin since 2009 should have the conclusion of this is it. This is the finality. This is the ledger for the whole world. This is the uh, triple entry accounting. Uh, because Bitcoin itself didn't change since 2009. It was what it was. It's that people try to bring Bitcoin into their present day realities of 2009, into their realities of 2014. That's why people thought maybe proof of work is wrong. Maybe we should do proof of stake. Maybe big blocks is not a good idea. Maybe we should do small blocks. And so 2023 was like the final year of unwinding some of these false uh, beliefs about Bitcoin. And we made tremendous momentum in doing that. Um, the first, the first thing that you had to unwind was this idea of a block limit that was done through many years of skating debates and uh, completed in 2017 and then 2018 with the first scaling BTC to uh, eight megabytes with Bitcoin Cash, and then getting to, uh, I think. One megabyte, one gigabyte, or four gigabytes with Bitcoin SV in 2018, and then finally the Genesis upgrade, um, and having miners update the block size themselves and set that themselves. That's been in place since 2020, at least, if not 2018. And but because we had to unwind uh, basically a decade of this industry, there were a couple significant moments in that in the past like 15 months. One was the one we covered in the first video, which is FTX collapsing. FTX being representative of the largest uh, centralized players or one of the ones that you talk about, Bloomberg TV, CNBC, Forbes magazine, you know, richest kid under 30, um, says Mark Zuckerberg, you know, for that to crash overnight um, was a pivotal moment in the understanding that the future of the blockchain is not via centralized entities. 
Uh, from that, there's been a reactionary event from all the other centralized exchanges. There's now a wave towards doing proof of uh, reserves. There's now, you know, companies like OKX, which is focusing on OKX Web3 wallet and more on-chain things. You know, the CEO of OKX has a Twitter bio saying self-custody is the future. Uh, and then so if self-custody is the future, you want to be self-custodied on a very scalable blockchain because otherwise we cannot all be self-custody. It's only the future for a few. Um, so then fast forward two months at the beginning of 2023, when we have this ordinals explosion, uh, that unwound the narrative that Bitcoin could not do smart contracts. Bitcoin could not do tokens and NFTs. This was perpetuated by the Ethereum folks and the Solana folks as the domain for other blockchains, not for old Bitcoin blockchain from 2009. Right. And, and once we had that explosion for a full year, to the point where it wasn't just popular on BTC, it was popular on Doge, popular on Litecoin, BSV, and then expanded even beyond UTXO chains where people like Solana, Polygon, Ethereum, they all added inscribing. Uh, Cardano or, maps. Cardano maps. They did it at, uh, as well by the end of uh, 2023. So Correct. that tells me, so so basically hyper Bitcoinization could have already happened in 2009 if people's immediate understanding of Bitcoin was non-linear. But people had a very linear understanding of Bitcoin, which is, oh, a currency, oh, a form of money. Right. What do I do with money today? I go to coffee shops. Correct. I go online Correct. shopping. So what do we need to do to grow this thing called Bitcoin? Let's get coffee shops to accept Bitcoin. Let's build BitPay. Let's get e-commerce websites like Tiger, and Amazon to try and accept Bitcoin, right. uh, Shopify. So this was a linear understanding of Bitcoin. Let's put regulations around it. Let's build exchanges for it. So it was taking Bitcoin as a finished product of this is a currency at a surface, surface layer and trying to bring that into the world that we have already known it. But what every time we failed along the way, like... Bitcoin went to 1200, went crashed back to 200. People said, well, actually, there must be something wrong with Bitcoin. There's not something wrong with our reality. There's something wrong with Bitcoin, which is that it's a public blockchain. Let's make it into a private blockchain. And let's fund the best people of our present reality, Blythe Masters, uh, Todd McDonald, to do R3, to do digital assets, seed them with hundreds of millions of dollars. These were their their days, Sam Bankman free. I don't mean that in the, in the ideas of fraud. I mean in the idea of taking a financial guru, wrapping that around this technology and do private blockchains. Then the market surprised it because like I said, Bitcoin is not something to be brought back into the present reality. Bitcoin is a brand new reality that we need to move into Bitcoin to understand Bitcoin and start with the assumption that one man or one team, Satoshi Nakamoto, was able to create a completely non-linear invention called Bitcoin that on the invention itself has already wiped out every existing form of the economy and finance that we know it today. And we have to lose our ego to be able to say, okay, how do I live and play by the rules of this Bitcoin game that's been invented instead of how does Bitcoin fit into our modern world? So then right. what happened in 2017, there was an ICO boom, which caught people by su surprise because the ICO boom happened once again on public blockchains with Ethereum, with ERC20s and stuff. It did not happen on the private blockchains that Blythe Masters and Todd McDonald's uh, were, were promoting in 2015, 2016. On the back of that boom, obviously there's a lot of things that surprises everyone like scams like bubbles and whatever and so when that crashed immediately the reaction of the present world is to say icos are cool but they're just white paper fluff with no roadmap not, nothing nothing tangible let's bring the ico technology to the traditional markets and let's do stos uh, security token offerings because those are backed by real companies with real revenues with whatever we right. can just add the te technology so that the consumer doesn't have to invest in scams in ICOs they can go invest in real regulated security token offerings during that bear market of 2018-19 this is where 
entrepreneurs raise a lot of money from VCs off of this narrative. That did not materialize in 2021. Instead, we had a boom in NFTs in DeFi. Okay. Mm. And NFTs represented digital assets like a picture of a board ape and whatever. Arexi. That Arexi. When that mm. crashed, the popular thing during the 2022 bear market, right? Is 2014 bear market, 2018 bear market, 2022 bear market, is to say, well, now we need real world assets because we, we can't have pictures as assets. We can't have pictures of monkeys and, and dinosaurs as assets. Those are not real. Those are bubbles. We need real assets. So like, how do we tokenize real properties? How do we tokenize a car? How do we tokenize a bond? Real asset tokenization. And what Ordinals showed was, oh, sorry, we're not going on that roadmap. We're going on the ICO followed by public blockchain followed by ICOs followed by NFTs to now let's cut all the middlemen out and let's go directly to inscribing instead of buying on a launch pad a huge sale from a Yuga Labs from a, th those kind of organizations from a D God let's just create our own ecosystem ourselves so if you follow this line of thinking then um there's probably only one move or two moves to go before everyone's like, I would like to do my own thing. I would like to inscribe myself. I would like to create myself. And I don't want to be in the business of switching blockchains, going to exchanges and switching blockchains. I've already gotten used to the idea that I'm on Bitcoin, BTC, I'm on Unisat, and now I'm inscribing. I'm now trading on Magic Eden. Uh, it's non-custodial all the way through. I like that. But see, when it doesn't scale, BTC is telling you, you got to go to a BTC layer two. Uh, some other people are telling you, you got to switch to Doge and do Doginals. Well, I can't natively switch from BTC to Doge at this current moment without going to an exchange. And I'm back to Binance selling my BTC for Doge in order to get to something like a doggy dot market to go buy Doginals. Then next day, you tell me about Soul Maps, Cardano Maps. I got to go back to an exchange and sell my Doge and get Cardano and then go get Cardano maps. This is a level of inefficiency that the market is going to solve. And so you're either going, you're either, your view is either that the market is going to solve it for the chain that's the largest in liquidity right now, which is BTC. Right. So then your view is that BTC is going to scale. Or your view is that the chain that's already the largest by scale today irrespective of what the US dollar price is right now, which is BSV, that's the one because it's already solved it. Why bother trying to solve it for BTC or Doge or any of the other chains? It'll just have a moment where everyone just comes over to BSV. So we're at this like final juncture of this cryptocurrency industry. And that's kind of like what I would say. Do you think people are consciously aware of what's happening? Because it doesn't seem like they are. Um, for example, at the end of 2023, you had, I was about to say bureaucrats, but really people that are central planners within BTC, like Jack Dorsey and Luke Dasher, and like Max Kaiser freak out and, and ask themselves, like, well, what are we going to do? We have to stop this thing called ordinals. This thing is a bug that needs to be put out. And, they, and during Christmas, they were rushing to create a mining pool that censored ordinal transactions. To their shock, they they had the economic pressure to be forced to serve the Ordinal's marketplace. I don't think that they were consciously aware of what was going on. I think that even up until the point where they were forced to still accept Ordinal transactions on the ocean mining pool, they were still unaware of the, uh, of the economic gravitas that this on-chain world has and comes with. So... I think that a lot of the other people in BTC are also unaware as to what's happening. I would say that even an Udi from yeah. Wizards is also yeah. unaware as to what is happening around him and what he is part of. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Are they aware of what's happening or are they just going through the motions and not really understanding the logical conclusions that you're proposing? Yeah, they, they are definitely not aware. So 
let me give you an analogy to why I think they're not aware and and whatnot. So there's a lot of people you agree today in the world who is not even aware of anything to do with cryptocurrency, correct? BTC, sure, Ethereum, yes. not, not, nothing. They're, they're, they're complete no-coiner. They're not interested. Because for them, the reality that they were raised on, fiat, going to school, getting a job, nine to five, get married, have kids, whatever. This, this reality that they get a mortgage, this reality that they have, they have learned over 10, 20 years of upbringing a complete reality. Okay. They don't want to fit something new like Bitcoin into their reality. Mm -hmm. Someone like a Udi or these people in BTC core, they, again, they're a little bit better than Blythe Masters, a little bit better than like Todd McDonald. They just accepted Bitcoin in, the, in a very limited understanding that they have and fit it into their current reality. So like right. what Peter McDonald, like, uh, is it is it not Peter Bedano? But who's the who's the person who does a podcast? Um, uh, what 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 uh, what Bitcoin said or something? Um, Peter McCormick. Peter McCormick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he'll say, "Oh, uh, yeah, use your credit card for shopping. Bitcoin's a store of value, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't okay. want Bitcoin to disrupt ninety nine point nine percent of their reality. They just want to add Bitcoin to their reality on, of understanding." Well, why don't they want to? That's why I have problem a problem understanding. Okay. Because you have to only learn one thing called Bitcoin is a store of value, and then you can right. keep everything else that you've already learned a constant and the same. To understand Bitcoin the way I understand, you'd have to try and eliminate everything in your current reality because all of that would change if you put those things into a Bitcoin native world. So to try and dynamically juggle a thousand different balls and see how they would re manifest inside of bitcoin is too many moving parts for them to find alignment on and because we're social creatures if you find a buddy that agrees with you that bitcoin is digital gold you feel like you found a friend if you say hey i don't think bitcoin is just digital gold it's this it's that it's this this the, the idea be before it happened that you can find alignment with a lot of people in the, on the planet about that is actually very very small a chance so it could be a very lonely place it could you could wait a long time so for them even now, like when Ordinal showed up, you'll have some people like Michael Saylor like it, some people like uh, Peter Todd who doesn't like it. Because for each of them, they're like, oh, you're telling me Bitcoin is one more new thing? Okay, let me think about adding that one more new thing into my present day reality. And some of them will allow it, and some of them won't allow it. Whereas for me, and maybe for you, and for a few people, we don't look at it this way. We look at it the moment we heard about Bitcoin for you is 2010, for me is 2013. Whenever we our encounter of Bitcoin was, we took a very first principles approach to understanding what is Bitcoin. Okay. If you don't have a first principle approach to electricity, for example, you'd be like electricity is for my washer and dryer, electricity is for my stove, but gas uh, oil is for my car. There's no way electric cars, no way, no way. For Elon Musk, it's like, well, I'm just looking at this thing called electricity. I don't know why it wouldn't be able to drive a car even better than gas cars. So I'm just going to fade gas cars entirely and focus my, you know, automobile career. If you're Elon Musk on just electric cars. Now he looks stupid for a year and year and year and year and year. But once he hits that inflection point, he's absolutely correct. And now Tesla is worth more than all the other automakers and drives faster than a Porsche. Etc. So with Bitcoin, we understood it when we found it in 2010, 2013, as an entire ecosystem, as an entire entity, organism. And that because that organism is stronger, more efficient, faster, etc., than the world we currently understand, we are willing to eliminate everything we see in the world that is not based on, that's not rooted in mathematics and the laws of nature. Anything that's anecdotal, based on historical precedent or customs and way of doing things, no matter how prestigious, how large the institutions, we're willing to entertain the idea that Bitcoin will force the elimination of all of that, companies, governments, etc. Again, for me, it wasn't because prior to Bitcoin, I was all anarchist and whatever. I wasn't doing that kind of stuff, but it's just I read 
the Bitcoin white paper, thought about it, learned from people like yourself, Daniel Kravitz, et cetera, absorb that kind of content and formulate a conclusion that this will all be gone. So even 2014, when I'm talking to Vitalik in person, uh, before Ethereum, I'd have this very conversation. I was like, you, you understand that your, your technology doesn't work like at scale. It's not going to work. Uh, and he, he, he loosely said, well, it's going to get listed on Coinbase. And, and, and so like, it, like, that's not something he says to the public, but it's like in a one-on-one -on -one chat, you know, I wanted to be educated, like why it does work. Like, I think it doesn't work, but I want to be educated why it does work. But instead of getting into it with me, you just told me like, well, the market's going to want that. Now he was right. He was absolutely right about it. And so market did want Ethereum. Ethereum did achieve tremendous commercial success. And so for me, uh, and maybe for you, our experience is we had an initial complete understanding of Bitcoin and complete, not in the arrogant sense, as in like, I'm willing to entertain that the things I don't understand about Bitcoin are things that are even more in the future, even more like abstract, even more new. It's not because I don't understand the present world. I'm saying I don't lack of understanding the present world. I'm willing to entertain Bitcoin as a complete game changer for the, for the whole thing. And so my experience has been trying to pull Vitalik back in. Okay, do you understand? Come, come to Bitcoin, come back to Bitcoin. Kind of try to pull BTC ordinals people back in. Do you understand this thing as a scale on Bitcoin? It's just the adjustment we made, and I think you made. I think you also similarly missed on Ethereum, right? Yeah, correct. Like for me, the, the difficulty that I had was not that I didn't understand the world as it is or that I didn't comprehend Bitcoin in its totality. I just made the mistake of assuming that a lot of people in Bitcoin understood Bitcoin at its fullness the way Correct. I did and Daniel Krawitz did. Because I discovered Bitcoin Correct. with Daniel Krawitz. So he and I, since I guess we were in our own little echo chamber with our friends, we thought people, well, it's obvious, right? Like you look at all these opcodes, we can compute script. We can. We don't need an Ethereum was our, our immediate go-to, yep. right? We don't need a dApps. We don't need all these altcoins. It can all happen on Bitcoin. We the only the only thing that we ever saw was like okay, for people who need like extreme privacy, Bitcoin is not that, and there will always be a need for that 1930s Germany situation where someone needs a privacy coin that is completely private by default, and that Bitcoin can't offer. That is the only like altcoin that we ever saw as like needed by humanity in the future outside outside of bitcoin um but for bitcoin itself proper um no I, I we i completely faded ethereum because of that right and there are people in bsv who this last year faded ordinals on btc because they were also like well that's not going to work it doesn't scale it's going to get clogged so i'm not going to go inscribe bitmap i'm not going to go build a, a product excuse me on btc Right. But we did not do that. We're like, we learned from our experience in Ethereum. We learned from the idea of why are you using Solana instead of using BSV? Like, so we've caught on to the narrative and we said, okay, well, we'll go play. We'll dance with you in BTC. We'll go dance with you in, in Doge. Um, but our experience is still, we're going to bring you to a full scale Bitcoin. If you show me you can do that on BTC, I'm open minded to that. But if you can't do it on BTC, our eventual goal is uh, to bring the world onto a full-scale Bitcoin. And that's why the UDs of the world, to really long-winded answer your question, they don't, they don't have an end goal. Like their end goal was digital gold. And then their end goal is now changed into ordinals. And their end goal will change to something else tomorrow because they have a linear understanding, a linear education of what Bitcoin is. Whereas you took a long, non-linear conclusion of what bitcoin would be and you're trying to draw the world to, to the future that we understand yeah i see the, the the udi types as like having experience in ethereum and they see themselves with that experience from ethereum coming into btc and they're just like kind of like bringing that experience into the the, the the moment but you're right there is um there is, there is a, they, they do hold to some sort of eschatology, right? Some sort of like end game for them, which is one where the laser eye, small blocker world sees to exist and they see themselves as ushering in scaling of Bitcoin, but there is no actual, there is no actual 
roadmap for scaling BTC. Um, so that's what makes me wonder because the smartest of them, like the Udis, they they don't ask for an increase in block size. And the fact that they can't even breach that conversation, that they can't even say those things. And whenever one of them says something like that, like there's been recordings on spaces where they've said like, hey, maybe we should increase the block size or maybe we should pay attention to what the BSV guys have been doing and teaching. Um, that is anathema. It completely gets shut down. Um, it's something that can even be brought up in quote unquote polite company amongst them. So by that on their own, they're handicapping themselves. And yeah. But to be quite frank, I don't care about them. Like they're wrong. So like, I don't even want to talk about how they think, how they, what they're thinking. I don't care. It's like they're wrong. But the thing is, is that like they, in order for them to, to contain. We don't need them. I know, but they the, can but, just they can stay they can stay on VHS. We'll do we'll do streaming music. Why do I care about someone who likes VHS? No, no, correct. You know what I mean? So, so in other <laughs> words, um, your your bet is that BTC won't scale and they won't scale up fast enough that people will more like uh, will more readily migrate to BSV eventually. Well, the reason why they won't talk about the block size is because if they will talk about the block size, people are going to just jump immediately. So they're trying to hold on to the idea that scaling the block size is wrong so that people don't come to BSV and they can cook them up some other kind of scaling so that people stays on BTC. They're, the moment they say, hey, we're thinking about scaling the block size, the market will just say, okay, I'll go buy BSV then. That's crazy. So, man, um, I, we've, we've had this conversation before, but it's funny how you know, one of the things, uh, Jack, that keeps happening with my conversations with you is, is that I realize how easy it is for us as Bitcoiners to forget things because we get so caught up arguing about the bullshit, small things yeah. that, that we forget about things that we already knew. Um, one of those things that we've already knew and that we've already known um, encompasses the idea of Bitcoin being so interconnected to who we are as human beings that it changes the paradigm of everything by means of us engaging in a system that rewards um, what's most valuable amongst us. And, and, you know, there's so many things, there's so many insights, so many, um, there's so much richness to Bitcoin. That that yeah, indeed you're right. Um, I, I I'm sorry for that di for the digression there, but um, I I I do agree with you that, like you've said in the past, for them to say, I I big blocks are a good idea. Well, that will drive people to BSV in the same way that uh, VCs would say, the blockchain's a good idea, but don't buy BSV. I don't like BTC. I don't like Bitcoin. It, it drove people to buy Bitcoin. In that same way, same. I like big blocks, but not BSV. Will event will drive people to buy BSV. Um, but but let's talk about that point right there, um, uh, Jack, because it seems to me like the greatest attack on Bitcoin was that of stripping the youth away and the initial enthusiasm of Bitcoin. That was the biggest attack by delaying its, its eventual blossoming that you see so clearly that I see as well. Um, but that delaying of it makes people forget things about Bitcoin. And I think that was the biggest attack on Bitcoin um, because now we're, 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 we have conversations, but all of a sudden we're like, oh yeah, I remember we used to talk about these things, but we got so caught up with the block size and all the, all the um, simple things that, we we even kept ourselves from learning more and dealing more in depth with bitcoin um it's almost as if if you want to stop a revolution that you can't kill the best thing you can do is drown out their youth um so that their youth grows up gets older and then the next generation will probably understand what the first generation did but 
it is that stealing of the youth you know i think that was the biggest yeah, but who cares quickly. again who cares you can have three people left on the out of eight billion that understands it and we can still change the world you can have well, eight people left like, who cares if the other eight hundred thousand people got psyoped no no i completely agree with you um i completely agree with you it, it's just uh I mean, let's talk about like let's talk about actual worthwhile things. Like, I, I don't know. I agree with you, Jack. I'm just saying it's important to point out um, this reality because it, it, what we're talking about here, guys. You know, Jack and I are things that um, were thought about by Bitcoiners. These ideas that Jack is expressing were thought of, talked about by Bitcoiners in the early days. Like, they, these these are not things that are foreign or new to bitcoin these are very bitcoin ideas bitcoin uh, very much native understanding of what bitcoin is everything jack has said is is super bitcoin it's literally taking the fullness of bitcoin to its logical conclusions so right now the, the one thing i love jack is is that now it's like foot is on the gas pedal and we're moving forward super fast hyper bitcoinization is here and and we are going through this process of things just happening. A lot of people are not aware of what's happening around them. You and I know what's happening, what happened with Ordinals in 2023, what's happening on Dogecoin, what's happening on BSV. So where are we going from here, Jack? Uh, well, it's pretty clear. One side is thinking about how to scale. The other side already scaled. So. The people that want to do something with an already scaled chain are going to be building on something like BSV. And uh like again, I just don't care about people like Udi and these people. I don't I don't care what they think about the Bitcoin. Like if you think about my mind space since I read the white paper in 2013, I didn't get I didn't spend my mind space on any of that stuff ever. It's like the, we try to scale Bitcoin. The day it became BCH, I was in BCH. The day it became BSV, I was became, I was in BSV. So I never went back. I never went back to think about what these people think about. And then when the ordinals came out, I guess we were first on ordinals as well with like or swap and all that. And now that people see, I don't care about vindication or social consensus or recognition. It's just like when I was inscribing inscribing Ordi or Bitmap. It wasn't like other people thought that was a good idea. I remember we were on a, on a space with like Trevor and these people, Leonidas. It's like, I don't care whether they think it's a good idea or not. It's like, I, I think it's a good idea, so I'm going to go do it. So I don't care if Booty doesn't think big block Bitcoin is a bad, good idea. I don't care. So, uh, but now that they do think it's a good idea, now that they all like Ordi, like Army of Youth all likes Ordi, they are basking in that glory. Like, oh, finally I was right. Uh, I was right. And then everyone, everyone likes me now. Everyone likes me now. And it's like, on the day um, I was going into ordinals, I looked at it as like a, a way to farm Bitcoins, like BSVs. I look at that the same way today. Like, it's not like just because it went viral or something that quote unquote, I'm back. Um, because that would be a rejection of my decision making in 2017, 2018 uh, to go into bigger blocks. So my... My thesis is that if you already have a chain with bigger blocks, you can't scale the smaller chain into having bigger blocks also without setting off complete domination by the chain that already has big blocks. So to me, like you are looking at the beginnings of a transition to Dogecoin to BSV uh, because those are the two chains that are uh, more scalable. If you are not linear in thinking you go to bsv directly if you are linear in thinking and you're like btc clawed then you'll go to doge this is kind of like how i think about it see it's different than ethereum versus solana so like solana is a more faster ethereum or other evm is a faster ethereum but ethereum won't scale because it still requires like metallic to come up with a scaling roadmap and all that stuff the transition from BTC to Doge to BSV doesn't require the BSV team to change a single thing. The BSV thing already scaled. Like I, I can tell you this, if if you eliminated every single app on BSV, like 
see we're, we're in a game of it's not jack what's the next cool app you're going to build on bsv like what's the next hot thing that's going to go viral what is going viral is the awakening of the human mind you could eliminate relay apps you can eliminate money button hand cash twitch you could create a world where there are no no bsv products period you wipe the entire bsv industry but the chain is still working and you could still have hyper bitcoinization in the price just from people wanting to just like hedge and hold some of the thing that already scaled rather than hold a thing that isn't scaling and we're supposed to wait for a wizard guy to scale BTC or something in like 16 months 24 months because you already waited eight years for lightning right so how many years are you going to wait for udi to scale uh BTC so just on the human awakening you could have hyper organization and the price will lead just like the price got to ten dollars fifty dollars a hundred dollars per BTC before Brian Armstrong ever made Coinbase right you had the price move be that attracted people to come in so yeah the people who are currently in uh BSV we might be very bad builders but good at understanding Bitcoin but the better builders will come when the consciousness awakening uh, is going to be there. So like 2013, the awakening is I can do things on Bitcoin. So some people started doing it on Bitcoin early, like ordinals and stuff. Other people came in late in Q4. They're like, oh, now it's on Binance. Ordi's on Binance. I'll go, I'll go get some Ordi. Oh, Bitmap has finally achieved scale. I'll go get some Bitmap. Um, but now that everyone's on the train, right? So we're on a new game uh, of who's early to the consciousness to understand that we need to move to a bigger block. And those people are all going to come in the next, in the next year. Wow. I hate to ask you this. I really do hate to ask you this, Jack Lou. I really do, but I have to, I have to. Copa and Craig Wright thoughts. How, any thoughts on that? You let me know. I I don't follow that. I don't know anything about that. Okay. Um. So so, people are gonna want to know. Hey, what does Jack Lou think about Craig Wright? What does Jack Lou think about Copa? Um. Have you, you know, have you given that any thought whatsoever? How it might affect BSV? Yeah, it, it has no it has no impact. All right, guys. Notice I asked him twice. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and that's the truth though. It doesn't really affect. I mean. I think the I mean, if, he, if he want if he wants to sell all his BTC for BSV and have an iceberg attack, cool. If he wants to sell all his BSV for BTC, cool. If he turns out not to have any bitcoins because he doesn't have access to bitcoins, cool. None of these three things have anything to do with what I look at. Is I look at these different blockchains as an element, right? I, I don't when I look at copper versus aluminum, I don't think about who's the founder of copper, who's the founder of aluminum. It doesn't matter. Right. You would say God. Right. Um, so when I look at something like how these different blockchains work, uh, as far as BSV is concerned, it doesn't need another founder. It doesn't need a guy to like fix the protocol again. It's done. It's just like it depends on how you want to use it, whether your indexer can keep up, whether your node software can keep up, whether you want to mine it, whether you want to build an app on it. The protocol is done. But Ethereum is not done, which is why you care about, oh, is Vitalik actually the founder of Ethereum? What's Vitalik doing to make Ethereum scale? What does Vitalik think about the fact that Solana's seen the market share? Because you still need to change Ethereum uh, to make it better or something. You don't need to change BSV. So therefore, whether this Craig guy is Satoshi or not, wins in court or not, what you need for Bitcoin to grow is already there. So what's what's the game plan for uh, 2024, Jack? You're just accumulating BSV. What's up? Yeah, um, the 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 signal I'm looking for is how many bitcoins are locked. Uh, so I want that. I want to see that number past 10 million bitcoins. So about half the bitcoins. Um, I don't know what the dollar price will be when 10 million bitcoins are locked. I think uh, 10 million is the point at which most of humanity understands bitcoin correctly so you know you know how i say like i think we understand bitcoin completely or whatever the metric to to figure out if the rest of the world also understands bitcoin 
is in the number of coins locked. And I've, if I'm wrong about 10 million as a target, maybe it's 1 million, but something, something between 1 and 10 million Bitcoins. Because first, to understand, you have to think, okay, I don't want to build companies. I want to own the asset. I want to own the th asset on chain. The next thing you want to think about is, do I want to own the JPEGs on chain or do I want to own the first token on chain or do I want to own BTC or BSV, right? This is the idea of army saying that already is the exponent, not BTC, et cetera. So like you have to make that decision. Let's say then you make the decision that you want to own BSV because on BSV, the Satoshis itself is the exponent, not any tokens, okay? Because the Satoshis are part of an ever scaling chain. Whereas on BTC, that you're sharing the block size of one megabyte, four megabytes with everything else on the chain. So then the thing that's smaller on the chain, like Ordi, will start eating the liquidity and the block space of the thing that's already bigger, BTC, because that's more upside, because you're trying to play that game. On BSV, I don't think the, the token is going to outperform, uh, uh, any particular token is going to outperform BSV itself, okay? So now that leads you to that understanding. So you're going to check who buys BSV, how people buy BSV, what's the price of BSV. But then even that understanding leads to a conclusion of, well, like exactly your question. Like, do I care about Craig Wright? Do I care about Copa? To, 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 to give credence to the idea of Copa is to say, well, if Jack thinks it's going to pump right after Copa, maybe I'll buy at $80 and then afterwards I'll sell at 600 and then buy myself a nice car, buy myself whatever. Uh, or Jack thinks Copa is going to kill Bitcoin. So I'm going to end up like selling my Bitcoins at 80. I'll buy back lower at 30. So even for the people who would want to buy Bitcoins and whatever, they're still thinking about trading Bitcoins for dollars and, and whatnot. And uh, why I want to see the lock number is even after you've concluded that you want BSVs, uh, you want to buy them, to fully understand Bitcoin from an economic perspective, is you're going to want to lock them to prevent yourself from ever selling it too early. Uh, and so you want to think about locked Bitcoins as your savings account for your full lifetime, for your kid's lifetime, for your grandkid's lifetime. And I think people will start locking for thousands of years, okay? And to to ensure prudency for, for your offspring, for your future generations, you want to make sure that they, they feel set. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, you want you might want to write things on the blockchain or save history on the blockchain. But like what's even better than saving history uh, on the blockchain is preserving wealth thousands of years from now, not just preserving a piece of data for a thousand years. You know, so people are going to start doing that and then they're going to spend a little bit each day in the present. Um, so when I see that level of awakening, um, then the types of apps people are going to build are going to be built around how do we not use Bitcoin today for click, 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 micropayment, 8,000 transactions, buy coffee. How do we create apps that allow you to live in the future, allow you to communicate with the future, make sure you're secure in the future uh, and lo locking based apps, security based apps. This is why I said like, what happens if Bitcoin's at a million dollars? Would you care about these apps that you use today? So, that's what I'm looking for in 2024 is a sharp rise in the amount of coins locked on the BSV network. So how do you know right now for sure that your idea of the states of affairs around Bitcoin and hyper Bitcoinization is not or are not um, way more far ahead of the market understanding than you think they are? Well, the thing is like locking itself is a zero to one invention, right? So that was done last year in the middle of all that uh, ordinal stuff. We had something called Lou Locks, uh, which allows you to lock without a ability to cancel, right? And then people extended that to do HODL net, like a search engine for results that are locked. They made HODL Locker, which is like a Twitter, but uh, you rank posts and creators based on you know, about locked to the post and locked to the creator. And then people did like the mints where you had to lock coins to get a mint, like kind of instead of inscribing, you are, you are lock scribing kind of a thing. Right. Um, so that zero to one has already happened. 
And so clearly, I just think I'm not that far ahead. It's just like, it's, I'm not the one building some, most of these things. People are building them. And so it's going to take off this year. Uh, other, otherwise, you're like, I'm in BSE for a trade. I'm going to go back to Doge. You know what I mean? Like, like Army can say that he thinks it's final. Well, I, I can't tell if he, if he thinks it's final. Like, he just says it's final. Nothing is preventing him from selling his already tonight. Right, right. He would so have to I'm lock so, it. He would have to yeah, lock his already. Lock it. Exactly. Yeah, except his mechanism. chain, his chain, can't, his chain can't do it. Okay, so Jack, I I am under. This is what I've my mind. Okay, just being pro BSV has been a costly ass signal for me. It's, it has not been uh, good for business, but I'm not one to commit intellectual suicide for more money or to no no. I have to be real and true to myself, and that's why it's, I've always been a big blocker. Um, not the entire team at the Crypto Vigilante under, understands or appreciates the big blocker perspective. And that's okay because that's how I want my work environment, my analysts to be. I do not like an echo chamber. And I champion them on proving me wrong. Prove me wrong. So um, from my perspective and my analysis, um, I think, um, Jack, that BTC and the small blocker world has been put into checkmate by big blockers, but not really by big blockers, it's just by the natural evolution of Bitcoin in that Bitcoin in its original design is going to blossom one way or another and people are going to figure out what you and I understand so clearly. So do you agree with me that at this point it's just we, we are in checkmate, maybe not the positions have not been put in their final place? But any good chess player, I would say, understands when they've won or they've lost way before those pieces are put into position. I really do think we're in checkmate uh, already. I really do. Um, obviously, not financial advice, but I'm personally, um, I'm, I'm DCA and B, BSV as much as I can uh, as time goes on. Because I already know, and I agree with you, Jack, that we are... Um, that there's only one direction in which this all unfolds and it's BSV. Could there be another direction that uh, the first question is, Jack, are we, are we in checkmate? Do you well, agree less than that? 20 well, less than 20 days ago, you were doing a podcast with army saying that you think BTC can scale. That was my next question. <laughs> that was my next question. Oh, BTC. So, would what, do you, to scale what, do you, now. What, what do you really, what do you really believe is my question? No, 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 no. I, that's what I said to Army. Yeah. BTC would have to scale now. Can BTC but, but scale you're, now? But you're, but you're saying you could. think it can. You're saying you think it can. Point um, it, it could, yeah. It could very well. BTC could. But they would, like you say, Jack, that proverbial phone call has to happen now. They have to yeah. all get into a Zoom call now and say, we're going to be a big blocker blockchain and we're going to do unbounded scaling do something like Terra Node. Forget about Taproot, Segwit. Maybe have it there as an option if you want it. And we're just going to go big blocks, but they have to do it today. Can that happen? Is there a world where that, where that could happen? Yes. There is a world where that could happen. But like I told Army, the biggest obstacle to them right now is their ego and, and their lack of knowledge, really. Okay, but you understand that like BT PSV already scaled. You understand that? I, results, of course, right? I've, yes, yes, so, yes. Then the next thing, why do you think BTC is higher than BSV despite, despite the fact that BSV is already scaled? Is it is it because of social consensus? I think a lot of it has to do because of a commercial attack against Bitcoin. And okay, but, being but delisted the, 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 but the, and, you sure. know, The, the attack demonized. was successful. The attack was successful. And now there's a social consensus that BTC is Bitcoin, correct? Yeah, correct. I, I, I'm, going, I'm going somewhere with this, okay? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so do you think there's a social consensus that we should scale BTC to bigger blocks right now? Hell no. No. So assuming we need to get 51% of people in BTC to want to scale, uh, how do you think we got to 51% of BTC people wanting big blocks? Do you think they just stay there? As the percentage goes up from 1% want bigger blocks to 5% want bigger blocks to 10% want bigger blocks, it just stays there without any of them buying BSV? Or do you think when we get to 50% plus, so here's my prediction. I think BTC is going to scale. 
but I think it's going to scale to big blocks after BSV has already flipped BTC. That's that's a good prediction. I, I I agree with you. I think that they are going. I think the future of BTC is is that they're going to be forced to scale, and I never thought about when that would happen. But I think you make total sense. It probably will be after that. It could be if they're smart. It could be before that because we've seen signs of intelligence, Jack. We've seen signs of intelligence that they grudgingly, for example, said, well, all of a sudden, Bitcoin's turned complete. Oh, my God. We discovered that Bitcoin's turned complete. Although Jack, Craig Wright, and no, Rafael no, what, and everybody what you else. Think, just... What you think is a sign of intelligence, I think is a sign of stupidity. If you have concluded that you want BTC to scale, Bitcoin can scale, but you don't go by BSV instead, I don't think of that as a sign of intelligence. I think that's a sign of stupidity. I agree. I agree. But the thing is, is that they, 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 this is the thing, Jack, and this is where guys like you and I made this fucking mistake in the early days. And we have to admit it. We underestimated the stupidity of the masses. And you know where these guys beat us all the time is that these guys don't underestimate the stupidity of the masses. That's where they beat us, Jack. They always beat us there because they know that the masses what can be easily manipulated. What do you mean they beat us though? Do they have Bro, more look, look at the price you? of BTC, right? So of course they they know that the masses are dumb, that they can be fed very simplistic rhetoric, that the masses uh -huh. will eat it up, and that the masses will um the masses the masses um are are, are very left brain le left side of the curve. So they're just going to gravitate towards that which is simple, a simple idea, like you said, that doesn't really confuse them doesn't really alter their worldview that much something that they can easily digest so it was easy for them to sell the notion of digital gold and give them a promise coin of one day we will scale via a second layer and if you put money into that good propaganda that's something that masses can consume i think btc can live off the the tailcoat of that um the tailwind of that for a long enough time up until they probably get an ETF or whatever, which I want to ask you about. But but our mistake has always been that we assume um, that we, we it, it seems to me that we assume that people will understand things the way we do. And the truth is, is, is that, um, you know, the truth is, is that someone like Army right now is, is is sitting on a very simplistic rhetoric, going off the tail, you know, living off the the, the tailwind, the draft of B BTC of, and he just, you know, siloed and you know he wrapped himself in understanding that the masses are dumb. So he's going down that path, which in itself is very intelligent, Jack. It's very intelligent to see the world objectively as it is, you know, although you and I are right and are correct. But who, who inscribed Ordi first, Army or me? I don't think that matters, Jack. I, I think what who matters... Holds, what, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, let's get... Let, I want to make sure that we, we are like... No, uh, who, who, has, who, who has held on to their Ordi longer, me or Army? I have no idea. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't exactly. know your so, of your bags. So 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 I'm saying I just don't want to entertain my time to okay. spend about a topic that is stupid. I just don't want to talk about that. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I don't. Are I stupid. Don't, no, no. That, you you're talking about monetizing off stupidity, right? Not necessarily. I just think okay. This is what, what I look, Jack. The, the, the truth, let's get back to the yeah, point I don't, of, think you understand. The I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. But anyways, go ahead. No, 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 no. Explain to me how I don't understand. Because I agree with you 100%. But I also know that I we want to mistake. I, I want to talk about conversations that if people watch the video a thousand years from now, is relevant to them. How do you awesome. and I trade, how you and I trade financially in the meantime is not something I really want to talk about. Because Fair no enough. one cares Fair about enough. that. Fair if enough. if Ethereum doesn't exist a thousand years from now, if already doesn't exist a thousand years from now, why are we talking about it? But like, you you understand what I mean? Like, it's like yeah, it's I like, do, I do, I, I do. It doesn't mean I don't have already. You know what I mean? It's just like what what is relevant a thousand years from now could also be relevant in a year from now because things can go fast. See, you just don't think things can go fast, so you're like, oh, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the president. Let's talk about the president. See, you keep on wanting to talk about president. 
when I'm telling you the present could be the future if you just put your mind there. But if you keep on turning this interview into this like booty army, this other stuff, it's just like it's really a waste of time. You know, Jack, I agree with you. So let's go there because I think that's that's um the, the truth, guys, is is that J Jack made me realize something in these past couple days. That our minds can manifest reality a lot more within the network that is scalable and secure like bitcoin in its original design more than anywhere else because if i wanted to manifest x y or z in a network that is limited i i simply won't be able to manifest that i'll just be living off rhetoric like they're doing on btc yeah or, or on ethereum just living off rhetoric but the, we, we entered into a new place where you can actually engage with the blockchain as you please in a permissionless, frictionless way because it is so scalable that you automatically find yourself in a new paradigm, which is exactly what Jack pretty much said in a veiled way, that he wants to talk about things that will last a thousand years, that he wants to talk about things he wants to focus on how our minds can get us to where we want to go now when we use a blockchain with the most amazing of infrastructures. Um, Daniel Krawitz has said that Bitcoin's motor is profit seeking. And I completely agree with that. Uh, Jack Lou, um, has very much um i don't know are you students of theory of mind are you a student of a pro applied theory of mind do you study these things do you study a john searle do you study um no i, I think I, you do i don't read actually come on so, you, no. so, okay, no, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm serious i i think i read in college basically i read some books in college not these books you're talking about but i don't so, read so, sci-fi i don't know mathematics i uh, according to army i don't know fractions I'm just a person on the planet who wants to do what I want to do in my life, whether that's coach basketball, play tennis, whatever, and uh, think of cool ideas that come to my head with my creativity. And I'd like to be able to live on that creativity. And because I like to think that I have some creativity in my mind. When I go to a concert, I see a musician with creativity. When I go to a museum, I see an artist with creativity. And I look at a world where we can't, people can't afford to eat, people can't afford like pieces of wood for shelter. And I just understand it's like the economic system that we live in that is not able to harmonize and coordinate and uh, monetize what is going on in every single person's mind. Okay. So when I look at Bitcoin, I'm not looking for Bitcoin for what Bitcoin is, I'm looking for what Bitcoin can help humanity do with our minds um, to coordinate because then I think you can create an economic output a hundred times bigger than the entire current world GDP, a thousand times bigger than world GDP, 10,000 times world bigger than world GDP. Because I know that I personally have had, you know, probably 50,000 business ideas. I've tried building 50 of them, a hundred of them. If you made it easier for me, I'd actually go do 50,000 of them. Um, and that's just one person. So what about everyone else? Yeah, and, you know what's very interesting, yeah. Jack, is is that yeah. you, um, you've been able to articulate something that I think needs to be preserved in, in, in crypto consciousness, which is the idea that once you understand, once you once we arrive at a point where Bitcoin is unbounded and it's scaling and that Bitcoin can scale, then any it's it, you're limitless like you're up you can yes. just you're limitless and you can create whatever you want now we as human beings we can we can create all we are lacking at that point is imagination and creativity very yes. focus on that phrase right there 
All we're lacking is imagination and creativity, meaning that the only thing standing in our way are our own thoughts. That's why I'm happy you called me out on like, why are you talking about this guy? Why are you talking about that guy? Because it right away makes me reflect and realize, holy shit, I'm doing it again. I'm conditioned by my environment, by this world to come back to this point of the limiting factors and just focusing on the limiting factors around me when I'm already in the new world of Bitcoin on chain, unbounded scaling, where all this is just bullshit. I can literally right. create right now, especially leveraging off AI and other people that understand Bitcoin the way I do. I We can create things that like anything, like our imagination can create anything. And a lot of people watching this right now are like, what the fuck are you talking about, Rafael? But in, indeed, guys, like we've entered into the realm of what Jack has called the imagination economy, uh, dream, uh, dream world assets, right? Uh, yes, now, real, real world, assets. world assets. Can you explain? Talk. Let's talk about that. Dream world assets versus real world assets. Okay. So, like, if you go travel to New York City, you'll see a magnificent skyscraper, right? Beautiful skyscrapers. If you go to uh, Rome and Colosseum, if you go to Rome, you'll see, like, a magnificent structure. If you go to China, you'll see the Great Wall, right? And you'll think, like, that's, like, a real world asset. That's something real. Uh you you buy you go buy a tv or something uh a samsung flat screen you'll think that's real whenever i tell you about crypto you think that's not real right but and then right now crypto is kind of small it's about one trillion dollars in size and the real world economy that you call real is like a hundred trillion dollars whatever 200 trillion dollars in size and so anytime crypto goes through a bear market, you're like, okay, the way to grow Bitcoin is to kind of bring it into the real world. If we can get the stock markets to adopt the blockchain, if we can get real art museums to put their art, physical art on the blockchain, then we wouldn't have this like stupid JPEG stuff. Uh, if we can get real estate and real cash flow and real income and rental yield and whatever, and bring that and tokenize that, then we can grow Bitcoin bigger because you're seeing it as it's one trillion. It can get to a hundred trillion if it can kind of eat up the real world. In fact, it might even make the real estate industry more efficient, cut out the 6% realtor fee, grow the market, etc. But see, even that very house that you live in, it at one point in time, it itself wasn't even real. There was some guys imagination that he can make a house like that it was some other person's imagination steve jobs imagination that he can make an iphone right so everything that you see that's actually real was actually itself a dream world asset okay but when your gdp is growing at four or five percent a year the new dreams that people have in their mind is about five percent per annum of the stuff that's already in the world. So that's why you're like, oh, that's a pipe dream. Oh, that's like 10 years from now. That's like 20 years from now. What the blockchain does is it creates a direct link from your imagination to ownership of an asset. So as far as BTC blockchain goes, I think something like 50% of transactions on the BTC blockchain are like BRC20s. In Bitcoin history, 50% of them are like BRC20s. Some, some, something crazy like that. Wow. Um, maybe, maybe I'm way off on that, but maybe it's 20%, but something like that. But BRC20 as a concept is just a dream world asset in Domo's brain hours before March 9th when he released BRC20s. And so what that is telling you is as the world gets faster, every skyscraper you see, every, every art piece you see, every single house you see, the current existing world is already factually a very small percentage of people's imagination. But if you can turn the imagination into reality much faster, then most people don't want to invest in things that have already become real. They want to invest in the imagination 
that will become real soon because that is the new stuff. That's the turnover. Like I, if I can get a new TV every week, I don't care about my TV right now. I'm, I'm, I care about the next week we have an even better TV. You know what I mean? Like you have an iPhone, you have a two year sales cycle. You upgrade your iPhone every two years. If you have unlimited wealth and Apple is able to create a new iPhone every single day, then you'll have a two-day up cycle, uh, upgrade cycle. You'll be like, okay, I want I- iPhone 89, I want iPhone 91, I want iPhone 93. And it was all free, like relatively free to your wealth. You would upgrade all the time. So then you would no longer care about what's already real. You would care about, yo, let's get imagination going even faster. Let's get people create creative creativity going even faster. Today, your, your creativity is shunned because it's like, well, it's tough to be a struggling musician at a bar performing every Thursday doesn't make much money. It's tough to be an artist doesn't make much money. You should be a doctor. You should be a lawyer. You should be an accountant. If the imagination folks can create much faster, you'll everything will happen in reverse. You'll be laughing at someone who wants to be a lawyer. You'll be laughing at someone who wants to be an accountant. You're like, I didn't know that that was still a thing. Uh, you're making a hundred times less money than me as well. Um, so then how do you imagine uh, how do you invest in the imagination economy? Well, there's this thing called Bitcoin. Because if everyone's imagination doesn't land in the form of a C-Corp, but the imagination lands in the form of a UTXO on chain, then the currency of the imagination economy is Satoshi's itself. And so now if you have a one megabyte blockchain, it means you can store one megabyte worth of human imagination every 10 minutes. Mm. Whereas BSV can store unlimited amount of human imagination every 10 minutes. So given wow. that, it's just like game over. Well, okay, Jack, I, I you, you're here with me talking with me because I'm, I think I'm one of the few guys that get it <laughs> alongside with you. Um, but shit man even for me it's hard sometimes to to remember these things and, and it's so easy to go back into the uh like i said the conditioning of like com- you know looking at the world as is and, and forgetting this new reality that we're in which is a reality yeah. where our where, where we are one with the bitcoin consciousness now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that is and that is a reality that um is is not based on some potentiality but reality rather it is on just acknowledging witnessing and interacting with the actuality with the reality that exists already that with bitcoin you can do that you can't do this in any other blockchain in the world and 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 it's um that's why it's important to talk about this jack because it's so you, you, easy do you have, to forget do you have, man. Do, you have simply, do you have simply cash on your phone Simply cash? No. Would you be able to download the app right now as live on air? Sure. Yeah. Sure. I can. Do you have that. an iPhone, right? Um, I have. I have. Uh, I do have an iPhone, but that one is upstairs. Um, right now here I have a a Graphene no. OS you... phone, Linux phone, uh, uh the Google Pixel. <laughs> Would okay. that work? Uh... Would that work? No, uh, I'd rather you have an iPhone so you have a Simply Cash wallet. So that what I'm what I'm trying to say is everyone listening to this thinks like I'm talking like theoretical nonsense, yeah. and uh, I just want. Uh, I mean, physically, you're what at least five thousand kilometers away from me right now. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah. So, I can send you funds right now, like on air. It's, it's kind of like what I'm saying. If you if you get your iPhone right now, all right. What I would have to uh, I'd have to find it and I would have to charge it, man. I wish I I, okay. I was I was ready okay. for it. All right, uh, but fine. I have an M2 okay. chip on this computer, which maybe I be I'll be able to download Simply Cash onto this computer. No, I I just mean like on air, ping ping, done. Hold the two phones up, done. Within half a second. No, bro. I don't I don't have that right now. I don't have the phone right now. Sorry. I'd have to go get okay. it, charge it. If you want to wait, I, you know, I can do that. Have the charger right here. If you want. If you want. 
I just mean like you keep on telling me what I'm saying is not real, and it's like it's real. I can send you money right now within this. You no, 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 Jack. I, I agree with you. It is real. I agree with you. The thing is, is so that then why are we talking about some guy named Udi or something? What, because what are we, we are about? conditioned. Like you have to understand that, like the small blocker worldview and the altcoin worldview, which is crippled, has conditioned us to think within the bounds of those limitations. That is the truth, uh -huh. Jack. And so okay. you're proposing and you're challenging me and everyone around us uh, it, to, to actually, you know, like, no, actually, guys, we can do way more. It's like <laughs> sky's the limit. You have to understand that this is new. This is new even to yeah, me, yeah. even though I have understand this. It's new, Jack. And I think that we're moving into a new paradigm in, in, in Bitcoin history because of this. And part of hyper Bitcoinization is that conscientiousness. Well, what we've been calling the Bitcoin consciousness to be aware of that reality that we we can we we can now be one with the blockchain. I know that sounds kind of hippie, but it's very true. Yeah. Let and me let me break it down economically please. for people. Thank you. Um the way the world currently works is the energy is divergence. Everything is divergent energy. The more people we have on the planet, the more divergent the energy becomes. So that people don't want more people, population control, etc. This is because the moment the money lands and is printed into circulation, um, the uh, the labor, the people, because ultimately every single thing that's productive comes from labor, whether that's creative labor or manual labor, physical labor, intellectual labor. There's some kind of like labor, okay. Um, the capitalists make money from the fact that the number goes up or something. Their asset value goes up. Like the bottle of wine goes up. But for the bottle of wine to exist required some level of labor to like manufacture the wine. Okay. But right now, all of our energy, energy is another measure of like labor, right? It's like it is laborious. It takes energy to do something. You know, it, it takes, you have to do something. That energy right now goes in the form of I created something, a company or something. My labor was produced into my own corporation, <clears throat> which means I get to own the fruit of my labor. If I'm in a low tax ju jurisdiction, I don't have to pay taxes as much. I get to IPO my company and therefore I'm a capitalist success. I'm not working for somebody else. My labor is for myself, etc. But the problem here is, even if I've hired, I mean, how many people do you think Facebook has hired? Half a million people? Sure, yeah. Even if I've hired, hired half a million people, I only have half the million people who cares about my shares called Meta. If I'm CZ and I've hired 10,000 people to work for me at Binance, yes, in the traditional sense, I'm supposed to be impressed by that. Because, oh, you've created $20 billion or $50 billion of wealth. And each of you, 10,000 people are very rich. But the other 7.9 billion people do not give a single fuck about Binance or BNB, correct? Like, we don't care about that. I don't have, I don't, I'm not working there. I don't have the up, output there. And then <clears throat> what happens even at 10,000 people for Binance is someone thinks, they're not getting compensated well enough and they'll quit Binance and they'll go start their own company, their own Web3 startup, their own crypto company. And they'll try and funnel energy and labor into that venue. And so, you know, you'll have kids go to Stanford, other kids go to Harvard. So what you're doing is diverging the possibilities of humanity by saying, oh, you 99.9% .9 people, you can't come to my campus at Stanford. Only we can that way we can be rich and we can work at Goldman Sachs. But again, Goldman Sachs itself is very, very, very tiny. But this was seen as an improvement because we, before the corporation, we had, you know, partnerships. And so you can only scale partnerships like a hundred people. With a corporation, you can scale a corporation to like a million people or half a million people or 10,000 people. And so that looks better than running a family business, like a bakery or something. You know what I mean? Like that's a two-person business. So the idea is to divert everyone's energy, but try to be the one that is the biggest among a very diver diverted kind of world. 
what Bitcoin does is it converges all the energy of humanity. Okay. And today, if you do a side by side comparison between Bitcoin and Facebook or Bitcoin and, and Binance, it looks very small. So you want to fade it, poo poo it. You're like Jack, but you're a minority. You're like da da da, like this other thing. What about these other people? It's very, very small. But because BTC on chain can only converge one megabyte worth of energy per 10 minutes, but BSV can do unbounded. Okay. What happens is, uh, we can each be our own sovereign individual, look like we're working for ourselves, look like we're capturing everything for ourselves. We're not part of a 10,000 person company, 100% thousand person company. We're just working for ourselves. But if we do it in a way that's connected with the rest of the humanity on the chain, on this convergence ledger called BSV, it means actually we are a bossless company of 8 billion people working at one company, which means we all have shares of the one company, which is Bitcoin. Instead of like this company's founder got old, so then I got to go start my own company because that's like a 1990s company. Instead of things like that, you have a 8 billion person company, 8 billion person country that has a live election every 10 minutes, finding fresh young blood every 10 minutes in terms of like miners like i'm talking about bitcoin miners getting fresh energy right you had energy 10 minutes ago well that here's your reward for that you get the fees for that who's got new energy who's going to be able to process more transactions bigger blocks every 10 minutes and everyone lives on this convergence energy in that respect it is not crazy to say that we're going to have at least millions of people who surpass the current wealth of a Bill Gates or a Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. Because these people are 15%, 20% shareholders of a company that only has 20,000 people, 100,000 people. You could be a shareholder of a company with 8 billion people. Not only that, you don't have a head of HR on LinkedIn trying to hire people onboarding people welcome to tesla here's a laptop here's your 30-day notice you don't have that you have a anyone do whatever the fuck they want with full freedom right you have freedom but yet cohesion in a protocol so then like what are we talking about it's like this thing this thing should be greater than world gdp in a matter of hours days months okay and and the, the amount of choice you think about capitalism produce more choice of goods than communism because now i can have my phone provider be at&t but also verizon but also uh, t-mobile and i can switch instead of having one phone plan with the state well imagine now you don't even need to be on a two-year contract and then switch to this and then wait for that imagine your phone plan was automatically switching to the lowest cost data carrier low lowest cost per minute phone call that's Bitcoin. The Bitcoin miners are the ones switching for you while you're not switching yourself. So in that world, you get to benefit from the creativity of all 8 billion people. Not only that, I predict post hyper Bitcoinization, you're going to see 80 billion people. You're going to see an absolute extraordinary growth. Like, you know how there's like a baby boomers because humans stop fighting each other and stuff and not like go to war bombing each other. So now we can go back home and have babies. What we are currently in the world we're in is an economic warfare every day. Oh, China versus Russia, Russia versus US. Oh, uh, Amazon versus Apple, Apple versus Tesla. What is this? What are we talking about? This is so low level vibration. It's a very low energy. We don't care about this. If you res resolve the economic warfare between humanity, then it's like, well, I can have five kids. I can have 10 kids. I can have, like, it doesn't matter because these are all, everyone's an asset. Everyone who's creative is an asset. There's no, I, I, you need to put the child through a million dollars of student loans and whatever in order for them to become an asset. That's the current world, which is creativity is not enough. We need pedigree. We need where you went to school, how many years of job experience, because we need a certain way to put people into corporate entities and state entities in order for them to be productive. 
the blockchain, if you look at what Domo, no one's ever asked what school Domo went to. No one's ever asked what school Casey Rodemore went to, went to. No one's asked what Pupitoshi is. Does he have experience with the metaverse? It's just like, yes, we'll have a 99% failure rate potentially, but we'll fail within five seconds. We'll fail within 20 minutes to know that, oh, this idea didn't take off. So if you can fail within 10 minutes, uh, there's 144 blocks in a day. So if even if you have a 1% success rate, you're successful every single day. You are successful every single day. So in that world with 8 billion people, it's like, you understand what I mean? It's like every every single person right now that's not in that world is literally doing self-harm to themselves. And the harm is identified in the fact that population growth has stopped growing. It means that we as a species do not want to reproduce anymore because we've been captured economically. If we are uncaptured and we're freed, you will see like a gigantic boom in the population, in my opinion, and wealth. I really do hope and pray that everyone watching this like really um, take in and fully understand and digest everything that has been said by Jack Lou here because um, this is this is a completely it's I wouldn't even call it a paradigm shift it's just an um, acquiescing your mind to a reality that is, exists now and it's not a reality to become to, no no you can be part of this right now Bitcoin in its fullness exists right now, and you can be part of this right now. Um, I feel like asking you these questions about like, it's almost like I, I, I want to go through therapy. Like, why is it? I, there's like a mental block in my mind that it's like, I see these things uh, like intellectually, but I am yet to... Uh, assent to them completely and i think honestly jack i think what i just really need is time to meditate um and just silence because uh maybe maybe i'm just drowning in too much noise of the internet myself and i need to step away and just really uh, meditate on the reality that bitcoin is at its fullness maybe that's what I, i'm gonna do that it is what i'm gonna do well i mean if you think about it, if you went into a self-induced coma for the next 10 years, or let's say next 1,000 years, right? When you wake up, your private keys are still the same, right? Right. But you wouldn't be expecting to do what you do right now with your Bitcoins because you were presumably where Bitcoin is much higher in value already by then. So that version of Raphael wouldn't be looking to play haste arcade tap tap games with his Bitcoin anymore when he wakes up. Correct. Yes. He wouldn't. Be, he, yeah. He may not be waking up to do podcasts anymore because presumably at that point, there's already every podcast is a Bitcoin podcast or like there's plenty. There's you, you find yourself a new role, right? Yeah. Um, but nothing actually changed. All you did was you went to sleep for a while, correct? <laughs> nothing actually changed. Yes, correct. Right? Yes. It's not like Bitcoin had another hard fork. Nothing happened. It's just, it's just the same thing. This is more people used it. More people were enlightened. So what I challenge you and people who are listening is, can you disrupt yourself every day? Like if you're a podcast host today, can you be something else tomorrow? If you don't, be a podcast host tomorrow. But like... No one is going to tell you, hey, Raph, it's time to do the next thing. It's time to do the next thing. You tell yourself it's time to do the next thing. And that will be extremely valuable. Like, for example, OrSwap, we closed down our company after about four or five months of operation. But I, I could argue that we should have closed down the company after two weeks of operation. And that the fact that like Ordinal's wallet is still around or Unistat is still around is literally slowing down for their own best interest the progression of what they could be creating. Do you see what I'm saying? So you want to shed you want to shed what you understand yourself to be 
each day so that you could fully be something new in your occupation, your creativity the following day. Um, and if you could do that, then we're not trapped in a decade of discussing Bitcoin. When is Bitcoin? Like the, the, we've already been proven that the first application for a Bitcoin ETF was 2013. If my calendar is not wrong, we're in 2024, still waiting for this ETF to be approved. And at most, this ETF uh, being approved, I mean, people are already saying it's a sell the news event. Okay, so maybe maybe it doesn't sell the news. Maybe it pumps to what, 100K? So you're telling me for 11 years, we've been waiting for an ETF to be approved as a catalyst to move the Bitcoin price up by 30%, 50%. 75 percent but it's been 10 years and we still don't know if it's going to take maybe it might be 15 years but this might, might be rejected this month okay what is that and then after that's approved people are going to then what buy a price exposure into a bitcoin which again it might be into the wrong bitcoin it might be into the one megabyte bitcoin that's probably what the etf is going to be right and then you get the price exposure you get to log into your brokerage account and then buy this thing called bitcoin but if you do that, nothing in your life has changed. You're not putting your creativity into the BlackRock ETF, right? You're putting your fiat into the BlackRock ETF. But how did you earn the fiat? Well, you earned it by working at McDonald's, at Deloitte & Touche, at Goldman Sachs. But based on what I'm saying, all these companies, even though today you think there's a big difference. Oh, I make 500K a year as a banker at Goldman Sachs versus I make $200,000 a year as a senior accountant at Deloitte & Touche versus I make... $30,000 a year as a worker at McDonald's, you think there's a huge like 12x wealth gap or whatever, 10x wealth gap. But the reality is compared to a Bitcoin reality, all three of these things are worse than minimum wage. Correct. You understand? Because yes. the, the, the fact that a, a human being, even with this BlackRock ETF, has to go earn fiat, which comes in bi-weekly paychecks or something, and then take the fiat to then buy the Bitcoin ETF to then still not own the Bitcoin to still not be able to create on Bitcoin. That I don't know what we're doing as an industry, as a species. I really don't know what we're doing. And so my message is not to have 10,000. I'm not trying to go viral with your video. I don't care if this video is watched by a hundred thousand people or a hundred people. Cause my understanding is even if it's just watched, watched by one person, even if you don't ever release this video, just watched by me and you, the, Potential inside of one person is actually bigger than the entire market cap of Goldman Sachs. You, 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 you understand? Well, I understand. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. And it, it's it. This is exactly the desire of everyone in crypto. As far as I understand, this is the end game. This is like the the goal that everyone wants. Everyone wants this deep down. That's why they're they see a future like this. This is why they buy the cryptocurrency. This is why they hedge their bet on the crypto on the crypto world. Um, this is why this entire space has value. Is because there is this idea of a world that becomes better. Uh, it's a, an idea of of hyper Bitcoinization deep down. That's what it is. But the uh, the truth is is that that is already here. It's already here and. But it's only here on BSV. Here's the problem. Because if your chain doesn't scale automatically into the future, into bigger sc scale and faster and cheaper, then what you're going to look at is I've hit a limit. I can't go forward. I can't add more creativity. So what I need to do is I need to go backwards. I need to go back into the traditional finance economy and try and convince Michael Sater to buy a bag, try to convince central banks to buy a bag, try to convince BlackRock to get all the retail investors and the institutional investors to buy a bag, bag via the ETF. Because you don't see a way forward because there's a stop sign on the BTC network saying, sorry, every 10 minutes, you got to stop at one megabyte. You got to stop at four megabytes. So then you're like, well, I can't go forward. So why don't I at least get the money from the backwards economy of the $200 trillion there? Let me at least grab some of that. You know what I mean? But if you can go forward, then you know that the future creativity, which is that creativity leans on the learnings of everyone that's created ever 
before. Like if you're an artist, you've seen the da-, 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 uh, da Vinci, you've seen uh, you've seen Monet. So you 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 get to learn from the people in your sector in your particular expertise. So the the natural conclusion is that the going forward economy should be bigger than the prior economy, as long as we have a vehicle that can allow us to go forward. All these blockchains they do not allow us to go forward. Even the blockchains that are more scalable, like Solana, like whatever, like Say, all these other things, they are just more scalable versus what we have today. Their own blockchains do not perpetually scale after they launch them. So they only have more scale at this current snapshot in time. But in three years from now, I'm going to need another layer one. I need another layer one. I need another layer one. Like last cycle, we need Arbitrum and Solana. This cycle, we need Say and Monad and all these other things. They don't have a perpetual scaling stuff built in. Can you and explain that a little that, more? I, I think people need to learn know this. Please explain this a little more. Because they think, well, um, the VCs are selling me Solana. It's what uh, Samuel Be- FTX was selling me. Um, I should trust them, you know, because people are that dumb. Well, we'll explain that yeah. a little more, please. So, so the governance system is like if Solana tells you they can achieve 10,000 transactions per second, okay? It sounds great versus BTC's like seven transactions per second. So you're like, let me buy Solana. Let me go use Solana. But then when you suddenly start using it and humanity finds out about new use cases for the blockchain, like I never thought I wanted to upload JPEGs, but now I really do. And now I want to upload like 1,000 JPEGs per, per second or something. Then you realize, oh, sorry, Solana is actually not scalable. So like when Ethereum first started, Vitalik is actually making fun of Bitcoiners, saying that Bitcoin can't be taken seriously at $5 per transaction. Go use Ethereum. Ethereum is at $0.10 cents per transaction. But then as Ethereum got usage, it actually clogged up. So we think that what, like, here's here's an analogy. The first iPhone came out, I think, with a two megapixel camera. If I'm wrong about that, if it's five megapixel, is what it is, okay? But let's say it came out two megapixel camera, and it advertised like the iPhone could store five thousand photos. To everyone, they're like, "This is good. I only need five thousand photos. Why do I need more? I'm good." But then the new iPhone came out with a ten megapixel camera. All of a sudden. The prior storage doesn't store five thousand photos anymore. It only stores like fifty photos now. So now I need a bigger storage space. Okay. So because you don't yet know what use cases are coming in the future, you don't know yourself what you will desire in the future. No amount of scale in the present is actually enough for what you need in the future. So what Solana says today is that it can do a thousand transactions per second. Um. But that's a thousand transactions of a certain type. But what if you want a different type? What do you want in videos and HD videos and 4K and then 16K and then 24K? I don't know anything about science, okay? I don't know if 8K exists. I don't know if 200K exists, even theoretically, okay? But I'm just saying that the human desire for more is never going to stop. This is in our genetics. You want a better life than your parents. You want This, this, this desire is always going to be there. And with Solana, they've done a great job because, you know, Anatoly is still working very hard on Solana. So they were the darling of the last cycle, and now there might be the darling of this cycle. But when when Toli stops, because he's a human being, he's going to stop in 40 years, just like Binance CEO already stopped, like CZ stopped. He's he's now resigned as CEO. Who is going to continue on your chain, right? Because you're the biggest stakeholder. So who is going to continue? Why would that person continue on your chain when they only own 0.1% of your chain when they could start their own chain using new technology uh, and start another blockchain, okay? That is more useful for the use cases people want in 2025, 2026, whatever those years are, right? And now if you are a normal person, you're like, well, what's the problem with that, Jack? You know, I used to buy be an investor in Kodak now I'm an investor in Apple, and now I just sold some Apple shares to invest in the next hot startup from Silicon Valley. What's the problem with this? Well, there is no problem with this, right? If Satoshi hadn't solved this, if please no explain, one solved this. Yeah, please yeah. explain how Satoshi yeah. solved this and how it is different on BSV, Bitcoin's original yeah. design. 
so Satoshi solved two competitions with incentive design. Two competitions that are perpetual competitions. BTC today only has one competition. Please BSV explain that. has both competitions. So the BTC competition, which BSV also has, is the idea of competing to show a level of burn or fitness or investment into the network as a proof for why you should be the one trusted to validate the network. This is the idea of hash, a competition of hash. So Satoshi, as far as I know, did not invent A6, okay? But his invention, Bitcoin, has been mined using CPUs and the competition kept going and then became mined with GPUs and then became mined with A6. And now every single week, every day, the hash on the network is increasing. And so off of pure incentive design, without him being the CEO, without him raising money, without him hiring people, he set off a perpetual competition between people on hash, on computing power, okay? That's the competition that exists on both BTC and BSV. Right. But BSV has a second competition, also from Satoshi Design, that is perpetual. And that is a competition on scale of the ledger. BTC turned that competition off. They said, we would like our scale to be permanently set at one megabyte per block, at four right. megabytes per block. Okay. What BSV does is it says, every miner who is mining a block, you decide how many transactions you want to accept into the block. You decide what fee rate you would like to charge for this block. So if you're greedy or, or if you're selfish and you say, I only want to process transactions that pay me one full Bitcoin per transaction, you're free to do that. But then all you did was take those transactions, package them into your block. But even the transactions you rejected, you weren't able to delete them. You just left them in the mempool. Now, how long can you go while being the biggest miner and fading transactions that are paying you one BTC? Oh, sorry, one BSV. Um, well, I don't know, because you must be stupid to reject profits, okay? Secondly, if another competing miner does figure out a way to process more transactions than you at a cheaper cost, and he says, you know what? I don't need one BSV for fees per transaction. I just need, or per byte, whatever. I just need like 0 0.01 Satoshis per byte but you need one BSV per byte, then that miner will take all your transactions. So now, if there's quantum computing, if there's things beyond ASICs, if there's more technologies, if there's better ways to scale, those miners will figure out how to scale for their own mining machine, for their own setup, for their own node. And they'll come in and take that scale and add that scale to the existing BSV network without us, the holders of the coins on the network, having to sell our Ethereum to buy the new Solana, without us having to sell the BSV to buy the next chain's coin that's more scalable. It is the different people who scale their mining infrastructure, bringing that scale to the same chain, which is why it's a perpetual competition of scaling without needing to move. So then I don't value BSV based on, oh, is Handcash a cool app? Is Twitch a cool app? How many people are going to use Twitch? How many people use Hot Locker? What's cool? What, what are the use cases? I'm going to value BSV as if what is the expected value of the future human scaling, human uh, innovation by all 8 billion people, all people that are the kids of the 8 billion people? Like, what is that in the present term, present sense and is there something that could be even better incentive alignment to create an even better dual competition for both hash and for scale until you show me that i'll be sitting nice and comfy in locked bitcoins in bsv that's that's what i want to think the world should understand amazing explanation thank you so much so yeah definitely um so what you're saying is 
in other words, Solana would not be able to do that. Um, no other network would be able to do that. And um, I have to ask, what about networks that are pretty much copies of BSV, but they operate under a different algorithm, like a Radiant, for example? What are your thoughts on that? That are not SHA-256, but are like SHA-512. I know my yeah, our audience um, is going to definitely want to know the, your, your answer to this. Would they be able to... Um, you know, also partake in this world of hyper Bitcoinization. Sure, but what what what's what block is BSV's first block? The Genesis block. Two thousand nine, correct? Right. Yes. So, what block is Radiant's first block? It was after uh, Cambrian, <laughs> and the I, I know their first wallet is called Samara. Did you know that? Yes. So after so yeah Cambrian, so it's, yeah it's, so. It's, 2021 2022 right yes correct yeah so there is a network effect since 2009 that's been building on bsv and uh it's gonna be hard to overtake that network effect right because one got started earlier um so that's my my view is that if I'm going to bet on a single horse to dominate, I'm going to bet the one that goes the longest uh, back in time has the most like mind share attention because Radiant can't steal BTC's mind share. It can also cannot steal BSV's mind share. What do you mean but by BSV mind share? Can, as you in mining? Like, like you don't think of radiant as bitcoin but if bsv no, flips btc you would think of bsv as bitcoin correct 100 percent, yeah because it, it would literally take btc's it's the only option that would completely consume all of btc's infrastructure right and BS, btc currently is the most well-known blockchain on the face of the earth most like publications most hash most whatever it would consume all of that right um so therefore the energy of bsv is that not just BSV itself is BSE plus BCH plus BTC plus whatever else on this Genesis block. Just like, just like if BTC were to, if the ETF is super successful, if you really believe in the ETF, you think ETF is the reason why we will hyper recognize, then it's possible that BTC could trade at 10,000 to one to BSV, correct? Sure, yes. Then they will be consuming BSV. It's not as meaningful to them to consume BSV because BSV is already very small. It'd be a lot more meaningful for BSV to consume BTC, right? Uh, because of how bit, much bigger BTC is right now. But these are, they're sharing the infrastructure, you know, like whereas Radiant is on its own by itself. It doesn't mean that it won't pump, right? Like you can, you can arbitrage stupidity. You can, you can, you can imagine what other people are going to do. Uh, markets is about predicting what other people are going to do, not about what you think is going to happen. But I'm giving you like the scientific kind of expression, which is like, at least I've concluded that it's going to be BSV. Of course. No, I mean, let's be honest here. Like um, something like uh, Radiant comes from the B BSV ecosystem. It literally right. was given birth to from like the com your conference, Cambrian, right? Where I was yeah. there with with our media team covering it. Uh, so it's... um. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting, Jack, that um, there's a programmer in BSV by the name of Wild Sachimo, and he has a saying. He says, I teach by doing, uh, I show by doing. And it, 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 this past year, BSV, a, a, lot, a lot of his ecosystem has moved into other blockchains and has shown the way by doing within Doge, within BTC, within Litecoin even radiant you know and now you like you said at the beginning of this conversation we saw this happen also now within solana inscriptions ethereum inscriptions cardano maps polygon inscriptions like it's it, it's all over um do you think that um would you say that this is also a sign of a lot of people beginning to understand everything that you've explained today a lot of people outside the bsv ecosystem yeah we're, we're converging like we're not diverging anymore we're starting to converge but we're converging around the ordinals narrative the inscriptions narrative but we're not that far away from converging into let's just do all this stuff on one chain 
And if Ordo's wallet is from BSV, if Unisat is from BSV, if Atomical is from BSV, if Dojino is from BSV, if OrSwap is from BSV, and we led the way not only to build the first marketplace, we were also the first ones to shut down. Yeah, yeah. okay, guys, very important. You guys are listening to the founder and CEO of the first Ordinals Marketplace or Swap on BTC, okay? Like, this is the market maker of the Ordinals industry on BTC. The guy that started it all, him and his team. So yeah, just making sure people know right. this. Yeah, so one, people don't know that, and two, people think maybe I failed at it. But I'm saying that the sign of success is when you actually shut down. Like, I will think that we're even closer to hyper organization when you shut down. And that's not because I don't like BTC. I like BSV. I'm very close to shutting down my my products on BSV as well. Please explain why. Because if you are connected to every other builder, your contribution as a builder is to bring a new idea into the market and maybe monetize that for a week or two or a day or an hour. And then it should be disrupted by someone else who has taken your understanding and improved upon it. Okay. So just like if you are mining for Bitcoin, you mine with the CPU, you don't want to keep your CPU going. What you want is you want to capture the Bitcoins and hold the Bitcoins. Now, if you happen to be able to also invent a a GPU, good for you, but you probably aren't the person who can do the GPU if you did the CPU. Just like if you're the GPU guy, you probably aren't the person who can do the ASICs. So what you want is you want to create a marketplace or wallet or whatever, but you have to recognize that almost as soon as you create that wallet, someone else will realize what you've done and they'll create a better wallet. And so the fact that no one's created a better Unisat or a better Ordinals wallet is not because these companies are great. It's because the the swarm, the, the, the hive mind is not there yet. In a mature Bitcoin ecosystem, products should only last shorter and shorter and shorter amounts of time. The idea that we have something like Apple that's been around since 1970s is a complete joke. What you want is new bright ideas, new creativity surfacing all the time, okay? So people don't give us credit for being the first to shut down. I think you should give me as much credit for being the first to shut down as, as you do for being the first to launch on Ordinals. Because if you shut down, you free up your mind to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You understand you know what I mean? Whereas, yeah. Uh, yeah. And because with chat GPT and AI, increasingly the marketplaces and these apps and these wallets will be commoditized continuously. And people have no switching costs because on a scalable chain, you take your 12 words, you could take them to 20 apps at the same time, 3,000 apps at the same time. Imagine you load your same 12 words to 3,000 apps at the exact same time. You could be using this, this, this. You're, you're live filtering every block for what is the best app I should be using at any given moment. The idea that you're going to use the same product over and over for 10 years is a joke. The reason you keep on using Uber every day for 10 years, the reason why you keep on using Facebook every day for 20 years because they own you and your data inside their company. Since these wallets and these marketplaces, especially with order lock on BSV, are not going to own your data, okay, then you don't need to be using them every day for the next five years. So if you're a part of a team that's building a product, you need to think about how do you cash out and make all your money from the product in the first one day, two days, five days, because it is very unlikely on day 500 that your product is actually going to be making more money than it did on day two. This is complete opposite to what Silicon Valley funds because Silicon Valley funds centralized companies in Web2 and whatever. They think that your company's future is better tomorrow than it is today. You, you know what I mean? But that is not that is not true. So we are seeing people converge 
and start pivoting. Like Magic Eden is no longer a Solana marketplace, it's now a BTC marketplace. So they're coming in. Phantom is now a BTC ordinals wallet as well. They're coming in. Coinbase, I expect to come in some point too. OpenSea, they might come in. Uh, Binance has come in, OKS is coming in. And then with enough development on Doge, they'll come into Doge. And then with enough things happening on Doge, and it's clogged on Doge, it'll come to BSV because the speed is going to get faster. But your speed to social coordinate a scaling mechanism is still fixed. It's Zoom calls, phone calls, emails, meetings. But you don't have time to do that thing when the world is getting faster and faster and faster and faster. You know what I mean? So when it eventually arrives on BSV, you don't want to end up with the company. You want to end up with the assets. Correct. So so then um, how do you, you mentioned when you started talking about this, that you have companies like Ordinal's Wallet and Unisat still caught on with this idea of them having to stay um, within their entity and still be, you know, supplying a service. Um, how do we expect their like mental conditioning to change to this new, um, do you expect them, how, how do you expect them to actually figure out what you just explained that they no longer need to run a company? Do you just, just will market pressure just move them in that direction eventually or, or how, how do we, how do we, um, yeah, they, they're already level? trying to do a lot more than they used to. So they, 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 they launch a doge inscriber, the doge market they're, They today just launched a bell inscriber, a bell market. I know they're still working on redoing twitch or those wallet that's i'm saying so they're basically keeping the brand but there's no definition of what this brand does they're just like constantly shipping new things so they're already not behaving like a normal company because what they've done correctly is they didn't, they didn't take venture capital so they're free to just keep on cooking whatever it is they want to cook if you take on venture capital you have to tell the venture investors what you're up to and it's not that they're your boss it's just like the even the act of bring those people in as a decision maker, as like a keeping them informed, going to dinners with them, sending them a PowerPoint update of how your business is doing, that is going to make you lose on chain. So now capital is a deterrent from, pro from innovation. Before capital was an enabler of innovation. Like, oh, your company has a hundred million dollars fundraising. Great. Now you can have a two year roadmap funding runway. Go, go in that, go build, go build. But now, if you already have capital, like who had more capital than anyone this year in terms of NFT marketplace? It was OpenSea. Where are they? Right. Who has more capital in terms of um, uh, wallet companies? It was MetaMask. Where are they in ordinals? Right. Um, so capital actually slows you down. But the doggy market guy is one guy. Um, he's fast. The bitmap yeah. dot com the community guy, he's got the best explorer for bitmaps. There's a bit earth sure. io. There is a uh bitlord dot land. There is uh so many people who built on bitmap and no one needed to pay them a salary, bring them on board, fundraise, invest in them. You just had what started as 1995 dot bitmap writing that onto the chain led to an entire ecosystem that even someone like a trevor and leonidas had to accept later on like oh my goodness something as simple as just like first is first writing something on on a thing actually did become not just a metaverse became like a multiple metaverses using the same block data so this bitmap experience shows you what this could be yeah, Bitmap you know, is, is phenomenal, dude. I, Bitmap, it, to ridiculous. me, is, is fucking crazy, dude. And and the more time passes, the more it, it's shocking how humanity can do so much with so little. You know what I mean? Yes. It's fucking yes. crazy. And and the beautiful thing for the Bitmap community is, is that they no matter what happens, Bitmap has a future because they have a home in BSV. And, and so, like, you can literally, it costs like $167 to inscribe the entire history of BTC with all of its ordinals on BSV. It's fucking crazy cheap, you know? So like we like no matter what happens on BTC, 
um, that enthusiasm of bitmap will just ride on into the future. I, I'm, that is the one thing in, 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 in Ordinal's history that has really like blown me away how, how this, this is just such a unique ecosystem dude this bitmap ecosystem sorry for digressing but dude it's no no for sure uh, crazy to me it cool. really is and the token distribution of bpm bmp was was crazy dude like i've never seen anything like that uh, yeah 100 fair distribution and huge base you're talking about over thirty thousand people oh you know, yeah that, that to me that to me was is also um Right, so you've seen thirty thousand people work together on a single project, right? Exactly, over thirty thousand. I'm, yes. te I'm telling you, there's going to be eight billion, maybe eighty billion people working on the same project. That's what Bitcoin is, and with tossing signals and locking, coordinating everyone, like it's insane. It's insane. So, like, I think okay, I, I, I said to you before we came on the show, this is the last one in the trilogy of this interview series. I think the first one was predicting that hyper-victimization happens in a 24-hour period right after FTX. That was pre-ordinals. Then there was one at the very beginning of Bitmap, but maybe halfway through the year last year in the middle of ordinals, where you asked what would happen six months from now. And I said, right. hyper victimization might already be over. And this show is telling you it is over. Because if you look at the end of the last year, a chain that people thought ordinals had nothing to do with, they thought all the BSE developers had come out of their shame and into back to ordinals and just left their mistake behind and back to BTC. Well, that chain in the final days of 2023 started popping off from $50 to $115, right? Right, uh, correct. And so you actually have gone full circle, right? In terms of like where people are going. Now that chain has now 3 billion plus inscriptions versus BTC has 50 million inscriptions. That chain currently has active inscription pro uh, tickers like OJBK, that would need 210 billion unique inscriptions, not sats, which is like however many trillion sats, but those only needed 21 million inscriptions because each one represented 100 million sats, right? So you inscribe once, you got 100 million sats. I'm talking about you need 210 million, a billion times inscribing. That many, you need to inscribe on 210 billion satoshis. Like that kind of scale that broke every indexer in BSV. Well, if you think it's a permanent breaking of BSV, sure. That means the Bruce Big Block doesn't work. But what if that is a kick in the ass for someone to create a much better indexer? For Which someone is, to... It is, right? To create an economic incentive to create a terror node or something like that. If we have that, then when things come back online, which things are already starting to come back online, it's it's out of this world. It's going to be, it's just, it's out of this world. You, you understand what I mean? And it's just like, there, there are apps being built. Once you're open source, once you're interoperable, like you say, once you're on chain, you can build an app with the help of chat GPT in 10 minutes, half an hour, one hour. I've experienced this myself, even though I can't code, I will talk on a Twitter space about an idea I have. And by the time the space is done, this app is out. I don't even know who listening to this was building it. I don't, yeah, I don't, I've I don't seen that happen. Yes. Me. I've seen, seen that, that happen, happen right? in your spaces. Yes. Correct. Yes. I have. D David Case made a locking script during the space. Yeah. It took him like less than 30 minutes. Yes. I saw that. Less than 30 minutes. That is the same locking script that everyone's using right now. That has currently got 30,000 Bitcoins locked using that script. Right. Wow. You've seen, you've seen uh, a developer named Rem, RemJX put up a, lock stream because i just said on space what if i want to lock and unlock every single block for the next 200 years i don't want a single moment in time where my coins unlock i want to continuously unlock he made a lock stream app in a matter of 30 minutes also so now i realize oh it's not the engineering work that's hard it's just like you said 
people have been conditioned into thinking what is engineering, what is building a product. It's making a website, a landing page, an about us page, a team page, setting up a GitHub, you know, re refactoring code, doing all this stuff. They've been conditioned to all this stuff. But if you uncondition them and they just coded with their consciousness to the minimum like tape to Bitcoin, you can code almost any app in like half an hour. And these are developers that, uh, not, not like David Case, but like in RemJX's perspective, I happen to know him. It wasn't like he's that great a developer. It's just, you don't have to do that much now with Bitcoin and with ChatGPT. It just all happens. So what's the point of having ChatGPT if your BTC chain is clogged at one megabyte? No amount of automated development is going to help you because the chain can only host one megabyte worth of developers' creativity. Oh my but God, you have a dude. chain that can... You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You're breaking my mind with what you just said. Yeah, you're right. Holy shit, man. And this is the thing, guys. It's like sometimes when I hang out with Jack, you know, like he says things that just... Jack, you're, you're right, man. Holy shit. Like, hyper is already here. Yeah, there's wow, no point dude. having another another show. We're not talking about Bitcoin on the next show. We're talking about some other stuff. Ah, that's, you know, and that's the thing, man. It's like, um, I want to harness this awareness. So it never leaves my mind. Does that make sense? Because yeah. it's so easy to get caught up on the bullshit, man. I swear, like, these, so it's like X and these social media crap. I, I noticed that, you know, um, the more time I spend on Hot Locker, the more like aware and I am of reality. And he left. I think he uh he made his point. <laughs> Guys, um uh, yeah, I think you are being psy opt at all times. Hey, I thought you were making a point and that's why you left. <laughs> no, I went, to, went to get water. Yeah, cool, stay man. hydrated, kids. No, no, but yeah. if you would have mic dropped and left after you said that, that would have been like the perfect like ending, and I would have just closed this up because it's it's very real. Um, Let's close it up, though. Yeah. No, 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 Jack. It's 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 it's. Look, man. I don't. I my prayer is for you guys to realize, and really take in everything that has been said here. I can't do anything more than to. Look, my entire time teaching you guys about Bitcoin's original design, BSV, has been an extremely costly signal for me, for my business. It's been hard on my business partners because being pro-BSV is like the most um, anathema thing, the most attack thing in all of crypto history. And the reason why is because this is the most powerful and disruptive technology because of everything that we've said here. It, it literally changes the power structure of this world as we know it, where you can come into the blockchain with your creativity without having to ask for permission and without any friction. How much how, how much are transaction fees on, on BSV right now? Uh Jack, they're like one what was it? One thirty thousandth of a penny last time I checked a couple months back. Yeah. How much where are we at now? Yeah, something like that one 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 fifty thousandth of a penny. One fifty thousandth of a penny, guys, meaning that you can community subsidize with five dollars, hundreds of thousands of transactions on chain that not just post transactions and post ideas, thoughts, digital assets on chain, but it also costs the same, right? To to list them for sale, correct, Jack? Yeah, yeah, it's all on chain on an on chain order book. I mean, like here's the other reality, like right? people need to understand. Because we're in a convergence economy versus a divergence economy. In a divergence economy, let's say I showed you, hey, Raphael, I found a new first iPhone. This is sick. You should invest in this company. What do you go buy in 2007 if I showed you the iPhone? You buy AAPL, right? Yeah. And you're up a lot in the last yeah. 15 years. For sure, yes. If I, if I tell you about a kid, Sam Altman, he's working on some crazy cool AI stuff. It's got this thing called chat GPT and you're a guy cutting checks in Silicon Valley. What do you buy? You invest in open AI, right? Right. Correct. Yes. And then, and then everyone in the world thinks you're really smart. Like Satya Patel of Microsoft invested in open AI. Very, very smart. If you saw like the first model of the model S or the roadster, you go buy TSI, right? Mm -hmm. Tesla. I'm telling you that now, 
when I see ChatGPT, my reaction is not to go buy OpenAI equity. My reaction is to go buy BSV. If I see the next Steve Jobs make the next cool thing, my reaction is to go buy BSV. If I see Elon Musk makes a cyber truck, my reaction is to go buy BSV. Because you rather invest in the equity of humanity than to invest in a little bit narrow thing like the equity of the maker of this specific phone. Because this phone, yes, Apple profits from the phone, but you know what else profits from this phone? BSV, because like if you put a device in everyone's hands and now we can have Bitcoin wallets going on into people's hands, then they could they could be uh they could be doing Bitcoin. If you got a if you got internet inside your car now and you're self-driving and you have a screen there in your Tesla and you can take a nap, work while your car is moving. Well, that's one hour that you're not spending driving the car, and that's one hour you're creating on Bitcoin. So I just think, oh, thank you very much, Elon Musk, for building a great Bitcoin app. I, I'm I'm more bullish on Bitcoin now, thanks to you. I'm more bullish on book Bitcoin thanks to uh, Sam Altman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So so when humans realize this, they will stop diverging their capital and their time into these other things called OpenAI, Tesla, or Apple. And I'm naming three of the best companies on the face of the earth. I'm saying that it is not that your company is not the best company ever. It is not that I can create a better Tesla. I cannot. I cannot create OpenAI. I am saying that what was already created, I'm recognizing, is a super company. It is better than these human closed-off divergent companies because it's a convergent company and it is a company that represents all of us that's what triple ledger accounting means is this the correct is this the reason why bsv has been the most attacked network on the planet because of these amazing capabilities yes because there is not a single person who has any interest in BSV succeeding, except for those people who are already in BSV. Please explain so that to me. So, so if you were in BSV in 2009, and you mined the very first BSV block in 2009, January 3rd, the Genesis block, or the block number one, you are literally the only person on the face of the planet that has an interest in seeing this experiment work because you got 50 out of the first 50 Bitcoins. There, you cannot find another human being. I don't care if they work at McDonald's or Goldman Sachs or the CEO of Tesla or if they're the president of the United States. You cannot find a single person who want to help your vision succeed except for you. You understand what I mean? So it's not about deep state is against this. Oh, government's against this. But I'll find alignment with right-wingers or I'll find alignment with Elon Musk because clearly Elon Musk likes BSV. Like, unless you own this asset, the the current human consciousness are not willing to entertain this thing taking over that much. If it took over a little bit, like if it took over digital gold, then yeah, like I get to keep all my job, I get to keep my mortgage, I get to keep all this stuff I'm going, but I'll just have some investments in BTC. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, I'm gonna keep my Instagram account. I got a lot of followers on Instagram. I got a lot of followers on TikTok. Like, like I got a fo- I don't I don't want all that to be removed. I, I don't want that, right? Yeah. The only person that could possibly want that are the people that are already in BSV. Which is why this idea of Bitcoiners helping Bitcoiners, when people say that, they think, oh, yeah, you, you need your taxes done. Let me help you. Oh, you need like a your lawn mode. Let me help you. They think it's like this kind of like generic helping Bitcoiners kind of thing. But it's more like if you want to create a world bigger than the world GDP exists right now in the next 30 days, the next 60 days, the next two years, it's actually possible. But you got to help the other Bitcoiners, whether there's three of us, 500 of us, or 50,000 of us. You got to help us do things at that scale. You cannot seek 
other people to help you. Convincing people on a Twitter space doesn't help. They're not going to do it because they don't have this asset. Now, I make the argument that we're going to make the world a better place, even for the people who don't have the asset. Say, Raphael, we, we're in post hyper Bitcoin Bitcoins are a million dollars each, $10 million each, $100 million each. But I have a sad news to say. One day we find out you lost all your private keys, all of them. Do you think your quality of living the day after you lost all your private keys is going to be higher or lower than your quality of living today? Repeat the question again. So if I were to lose all my private keys, post hyper Bitcoinization, but, but, well, yeah, my but everyone, else, life- but, everyone, but, but everyone else is a Bitcoiner. All 8 billion people are Bitcoiners, except for you. You're the only guy with no Bitcoins. Is yeah. your life better in that world than is your life better in today's world? For you personally, for your life. I mean, I think... If everyone else around me is better off, um, I think I can argue that I, I would be better off. But compared to others who do have Bitcoin, I won't be better off. So, it's but what if I hand. were to tell you that in, in about three hours, the following day, you would be able to achieve more financial success than you have currently in terms of the purchasing power? Right, but I don't have any Bitcoin. No, but in three hours, you've if, made, if I like, lost you know, it. yeah, but you, in, in the following three hours, you made another 500,000 Satoshis. Is that cool? Yeah, that's great. Sure, yeah. And then that 500,000 Satoshis buys you more homes that you, than you currently own, more cars than you currently own. Sure, yes, sure. Is that better or is the, your life currently better trying to make podcasts to grow Bitcoin, but yet you currently don't have as much money as you would in that world after one day? That's what I'm trying to say is what you're trying to achieve over 45 years of working to accomplish retirement and and this kind of thing that people are currently trained to do, you will be able to accomplish inside of minutes and hours starting from no no Bitcoins in a post-Bitcoin world. I see what you're saying. Yes, yes. Okay, that makes sense because Bitcoin will just once once hyper-Bitcoinization really takes off on chain, on BSV. there's no stopping it and wealth creation will just keep growing like exponentially. I, I don't think it will stop. You know, it's it, that's the crazy thing. You know what, Jack? It's it's only limited by human creativity and imagination. That's really what I've come to understand these past couple of days. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. Bitcoin will only go because now we we've unlocked like infinite unbounded scaling on crypto with yeah. Bitcoin's original design BSV. That now the only limitation that we have is in our minds. So right. we're going to be as wealthy as we are daring, wealthy as we are uh, imaginative and creative on chain. That's how wealthy humanity is going to be. So yeah, which is which is very interesting, Jack, because creativity and imagination is that one thing that they took away over 12 years of government indoctrination from everyone that we know, including ourselves, they really hammered obedience, really hammered um, just following orders. Just go to any like MBA uh, or business faculty in the world. They literally should give people knee pads on the way out because they just teach them to about compliance, 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 um, and and just think within this box. And, and, and creativity and imagination is just something that they call entrepreneurship. But even entrepreneurship is something that belongs within the realm of having intellectual capital that comes along with financial capital from some investor, right? So everything is within a box of of, of control. Box in a 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 box. How yeah. many boxes? So you got we, out of one box, you, you, you find yourself in another box. You, you never mm-hmm. actually out. Correct. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's like we're in this landscape now where it's not an idea of like, all right, we will get there someday or we want to um, be able to achieve this technological capabilities. But we're there right now. These economic and technological capabilities are available now on, on BSV. And the only thing limiting right now is the fact that you guys have seen me struggle with these ideas. I'm being very vulnerable here to show you guys that you're not alone. If you have a hard time understanding the fullness of this, know that it's because we've been robbed of our creativity and imagination since we were little kids. You were told to sit down and raise your hand to go use the restroom. 
Literally, that was programmed for you to do away with your own ingenuity so that you can so that you're a worker bee. That's literally what they instilled in you as a child. And and if and if if most people, you know, unfortunately, they paid money later on after 12 years of indoctrination to become indoctrinated even more and to have personal buy-in into a college degree or whatever. And we're in a world where all of that is bullshit. We're in a world now where what is most valuable is creativity. What is most valuable is 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 to use your imagination. So, and it's not, guys, this is the thing. Something that in my conversations with Jack, he never said it explicitly, but it's something that I, I learned from, which is theory of mind, applied theory of mind. When we use the word imagination, it doesn't mean something that is otherworldly worldly, or something that is not here. It's literally to live as if it were the case. It's no different than going to any advanced uh, CEO a training, advanced leadership training where they teach you the importance of uh, uh, like Tony Robbins, right? He would teach you the importance of visualizing, feeling, engaging all of yourself, actualizing your full potentiality, controlling your emotions, activating your emotions, all of these things that CEOs pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to go get specialized training to activate that creativity, that spontaneity is literally what we talk about when we're talking, when we say like, okay, now we're, we have to be creative. We have to be imaginative. So imagination is not something for children. It's something that is very proper to those people within our world that have the highest of responsibilities. And this is exactly the training that like CEOs go to. Why do I know this? Because um, I'm going to shout out to Peter Sage, who spoke at Anarchapulco, who was one of the top trainers of Tony Robbins. And he himself has had long conversations with me. And we talked about this topic here where he literally will, will charge a CEO over $400,000 a year. And it has to be of, of a, a CEO of a, of a company that is X bigger plus whatever. It has to be a giant company. You take him in as a client and hit, and they do give him special training on how to literally wake up that which was like taken away from them as a child, their imagination, their creativity. So when we talk about imagination and creativity, we're not talking about some, 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 you know, uh, diminishing of what that word means, because that's literally part of the programming and the conditioning that you were instilled with as a child, that your creativity, your imagination is something worthless. In reality is the most important thing that you have. And it's realizing that now you have an unlimited network with unlimited potential, Bitcoin in its original design, that allows you to literally create whatever you want on chain, especially when we're leveraging off AI. We're, we're in a world where, um, as I'm telling you, sometimes it hits, it hits me, the, the, the gravitas of, of how important this is, but sometimes it just um, it escapes me. And I realize at that moment in my mind that when it escapes me, it is because of the conditioning to stay within this blasé, conditioned world of accepting the status quo as it is and i'm telling you guys right now that we've moved beyond that 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 level of conditioning and programming that that this is what crypto is about this is the promise of bitcoin and this is exactly why we're here why we're trying to tell you about this because it is it, it is um it is true what the psalm says. And, and there's a guy on Twitter that was telling me, I said this for you. I don't care who said this. I've written about this. Actually, it's a psalm. I'm going to quote a psalm. It says, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Bitcoin in its totality and its fullness has become the cornerstone of all of crypto, of all builders within Bitcoin, of everyone that said that they understood Bitcoin better than Satoshi, that they could build something better than Bitcoin's original design. I hate to tell you the truth, Again, which is looking at you in the face, that BSV is in Bitcoin, its original design, and all of its people that learned about it are paving the way towards hyper Bitcoinization, and that you're going to be consumed by this, whether you like it or not. It's the truth. And that's why a lot of you guys that used to fight with me over the years now are silent. Because the truth is no longer something that I have to argue for, it's something that I literally just have to point to.
because it's smacking you in the face. And the longer you take to acknowledge and acquiesce to this reality, the more you're going to hurt. It's just the truth. So please, for your own sake, stop thinking out of your own ego and embrace the fullness of Bitcoin because we have been liberated now, guys. This is really huge. This is very big. Humanity has been liberated and you're capable of creating whatever you want now. You just have to literally snap out of your conditioning of living within your within your the limitations that they impose upon your mind. Those limitations that tell you, oh, you can't do this. Or the one that I, I, I showed you guys with through my own example that Jack called me out of, which is like comparing, looking to someone else, seeing, oh, uh, but this person doesn't get it. But that person doesn't get it. Guys, those are all traps. Those are all mental conditioning traps. Traps that keep you from the reality that we are in right now. The reality that Bitcoin in its original design allows you to do whatever you want. You can interface with the blockchain and create whatever you want. That you don't need Amazon, Google, Facebook, Twitter. You don't need none of them anymore. That you can use the Bitcoin miners as the back end of your business to plug and play and create something bigger than any centralized company could ever create. So this is such a big deal, Jack, that um, I, I, it's almost like at this point, dude, I don't even know what else to say. Um, and I'm sorry to cut you off. You were you were about to say something. Pardon me if you were about to say something, man. I started ranting there, but um, I, I'll I'll get to it. Like, what are you gonna say? What are you, what, what, what are you about to say? Look, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm a fundamental analyst. This is costly as signals, as I said in the past, to be pro BSV, to be pro Bitcoin's original design, to be on the side of Craig Wright and not on the side of the popular crowd like Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, Sam Altman, who are against Craig Wright right now in the COPA trial. But yeah, I have to tell you guys the truth as it is. And, and, um, and the truth is not something that I even have to argue for anymore. The truth is looking at you and the fact that BTC is a crippled big block blockchain right now. Like that's how in your face this is. That financial pressure has literally forced the hand of people in BTC that hated these ideas for some reason. And that now they even have to accept arbitrage tran uh, transactions of data on their own blockchain constituting the vast majority of transactions on their blockchain and that is just the tip of the iceberg guys because what jack and i are giving you right here is like the biggest fucking alpha that you will ever find because once you once you once you guys really embrace this and i'm at the point jack because i this is the i, I realize my mistake my mistake is that i keep thinking about well, how do I make sure other people get it? How do I make sure other people get it? Because my desire is to teach. It's to teach. It's to get people to get it. And I'm at the point right. now, dude, that I don't really even care anymore, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to DCA as much as I can, BSV, and chill. That's all I'm going to do, okay? That's all I'm going to do, literally. That's all I'm going to do. Sooner or later, you will figure it out. If it's not hitting you in the face right now, as it obviously is, I don't know what the fuck else to tell you, show you. It's there. So you either acquiesce to reality or you don't. If you want to sell your BSV, by all means, sell that motherfucker. I will buy it at $5 if you guys want to dump. Please do that. You will be doing me a favor, okay? Because I get it. I know what the fuck is going on. And I know I'm going up against the vast, the, the, the totality of the Bitcoin crypto industry. Why? Because they don't want this to exist. They've been owned by Silicon Valley and big tech. They hate this idea because their masters will be put out of business. Do you understand that? What's happening here? So I, at this point, from no, now no. on, I'm, I don't even care to explain myself anymore. I think we've done enough. So what you're gonna say, well, Jack? Well, well now, now you know why I said this is the last one, because it's like, why are we still doing this? It's, it's yeah. already, already happened. We can go back and chill. Totally. Now, okay. yeah. It, that's also why I was pressing you a little bit earlier in the conversation. Like, if we're going to do this podcast, let's talk about the stuff we're, we're talking about right now. Let's not talk about this other, what I just heard on Spaces, what I just saw this person say. Th this is all irrelevant. Let's talk about, like, beyond, right? Awesome. And let's yes. get, like, let's get let's get a little analytical, a little psychological about, like, why people are so afraid of this, okay? 
is we all have insecurities. I have insecurities. You have insecurities about the way we look, the way uh, we grew up, where we come from, all that stuff, right? And maybe insecure about how much, how little power you have or how little status you have or uh, how much wealth you have. Okay, these are different th different things I can sure, think of. Correct, yes. And for a lot of people, they look at Bitcoin as a solution to some of these insecurities. So it's like, man, if I buy BTC and it pumps 100x, I get to be rich. Then I can buy a Lambo. Then I can be a somebody in this world that I'm a nobody in. Maybe if I get really rich or if I appear on a panel or I go on TV, maybe I'll be able to be invited to that cocktail party that I'm not invited to right now. Maybe, you know, I'll get with that person that I, that, that I can't get with that kind of stuff. And so when you're looking for Bitcoin to accomplish some of these, overcome some of these insecurities you have in the modern world, um, you like that version of Bitcoin or that version of Ethereum, that version of Solana, because it actually might do that. It solves some problem in the current world, but it doesn't disrupt the entire current world so that you got to leg up on somebody. You get to move up the ladder of this like pyramid scheme that we're in and you get to flex on other people. And like Army would say, you get to join this 1% via Bitcoin. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. The world that I'm describing is a world where we actually don't give a fuck if you have a lot of Bitcoin. We don't give a fuck if you have a lot of employees. We actually feel bad for your employees. I we we're, we'll be actively telling you, telling your employees to quit the the job because this is like ridiculous that you're still you're still part of a company that's like twenty thousand people. So we don't admire the power CEO anymore in that future world, right? So there are no there, there's 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 a there's a fear of the unknown. Like, yes, you're telling me, okay, if this BSC thing works, I'll be rich. But now all of a sudden, it's like you took away why I wanted to be rich in the first place. I wanted to be rich to flex and drive Lambos and do this other stuff in the modern world. You're telling me not only will I be rich, but other people will be able to get rich too. And then no one actually cares. In fact, if Raphael loses all his private keys, he actually doesn't care because in three hours, he'll, he'll be able to get all the stuff he needs to get back. Well, then what is my actual purpose? So you weren't just indoctrinated to turn away your creativity. You were also indoctrinated to have these certain desires for status and power and wealth. Right. To You see? And BTC is in alignment to those desires. BSV, yes. even though it might deliver you unlimited wealth, it actually is not in alignment to that current conditioning because you would need to come out of your subconsciousness right now and move. You would have to level up your vibrations to a new level where, you know what? Actually, my exist existence is about something else. It's about spiritual. It's about some kind of vibration. It's about having a positive impact on people around me. It's about building a family. It's about it, it, like your, your Bitcoin as BSV pushes you to such a level like clearly Calvin Air doesn't is, is not that level because he or these people they're, they're they're talking about using this and leverage it and get a patent and get this enterprise to pay me for a patent and then like get the court to like sign this and then I can get the BTC coins. And that's why that thing feels so scammy. It's like, well, if you believed in BSV, um, why do you even care about getting the BTC coins back? Don't you have aren't you a billionaire? Why don't you just right. Spend a, why don't you spend $50 million and just buy some BSV and then we just make BSV worth uh, $10 million each? Why, why do you even need the Satoshi coins? For what? Right. Like he thinks, oh, I get the Satoshi coins, I can dump it, I get to like have this like $500, uh, $5 billion. Well, why don't you just buy $50 million of BSV, have it go up 100x? Isn't that $5 billion? Right? So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe what I'm saying is the the... Like everyone needs something called leverage, which is like, what is the instrument that makes what you say come true? If what you say is possible. So one, one possibility is what I'm saying is not possible. The other possibility is that the instrument I've identified is wrong. 
Like BSV is not the thing that can make what I'm saying happen. That BSV actually is a scam chain by Craig Wright, by Calvin, in which case I need to really care about Copa and see if Craig Wright is the real deal because otherwise there's no value to BSV. But if BSV is the leverage point by which you can manifest the world I'm speaking about, right? Then we don't care about Copa. We don't care about patents. We don't care about enterprise adoption. Not because I don't, know the value of those things in the prior world, they have a lot of value. If you're in a divergent economy where everyone's competing with each other, then of course you need to have a patent. Of course you need to have an NDA. Otherwise, you get fucked. But if we're in a conversion economy, what do I need a patent for? I want everyone to know my trade secrets. I want to shut down my company within a week. It is boomer that it took me three months to shut down my company. You see what I'm saying? So if this is what's going to happen, then the biggest thing blocking people is not that they lack creativity. It's not that they were indoctrinated. These are part of it, yes. But there's some more deep-rooted psychological things that you've been covering up for decades in terms of your insecurities as a human on this planet. And you're not, you haven't thought of a world beyond that. Uh, and BSV is going to force you to think about that. But because that vibration is so far away from you, you don't see this as something you want. You don't see this as solving your problem because you're like, I want to be able to take this girl on a nice dinner tomorrow. So I just need to get a bag. And like, then I can get a girl, then I can get a nice apartment, then I can get like a, buy a nice piece of clothing, a nice watch. You're still at this level. You know what I mean? You're not at the level of, why do I care about buying watches where I can afford 100,000 watches, where I can afford 5, 50, 50 Lambos, where I can afford anything I want? Why do I want this? You're not at that free spirit. In fact, one of the reasons why Steve Jobs can make you the iPhone, can make you the iPad, is that he reached that level well decades before he invented these things. He was in India walking on his bare feet. He was trying random diets like only eating fruit. He was doing yoga he's telling the world autobiography of a yogi is the book one book he recommend everyone reads that's why he doesn't care that he's actually fired by his own company apple he's like you know what i don't even want any shares fuck the shares i'm dumping them when he's invited back for apple he's like i don't even want more cash or shares what does he want he wants the ability that was pre-bitcoin he wanted the ability to take his imagination and be able to build that product. So he wanted full product control. Fuck the shares. Fuck the cash. Because at that time, he didn't have a blockchain to put his creativity on. He had to put his creativity into a corporation. So that's the deal that he negotiated. You see what I'm saying? Because you need to be at that level to think to think like this. And you know what? This is, you know what I'm saying? This is why Bitcoiners, the other, the other Bitcoiners don't understand this. You know, look, man, whenever I go to Anarchopolco, um, I gravitate towards the yogi health and wellness aspect of it. Um, and I, I think, dude, I think you're 100% right. Now, my question to you is, do you think people that are like, let's say, on BTC and that we're really consumed by that, that zeitgeist, that mindset of we're going to the moon and the, you're not going to make it and have fun staying poor, <laughs> that nasty fucking worldview like the Sansa Mao quote that he said, you know, Bitcoin's not for poor people. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Bitcoin is right. for everyone, man. It can scale. I literally in BSV, we you could I can subsidize hundreds of thousands of transactions, millions of transactions if I want to, billions of transactions if I really want to, for anyone in the world to like post and list shit for sale for free on chain, man. And then get paid in Bitcoin for that create their personal creativity. Literally, I can personally onboard the whole fucking planet right now onto BT BSV. Literally, yeah. how much would it cost me for eight billion listings and postings? Postings and listings for sale. Eight billion. How much would it cost me? Eight billion posting and listings well, for sale. Four hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. All right, guys, I'm onboarding the whole fucking planet because Bitcoin's for everyone, dude. And, it, and I'm going to make it for free for everyone to post and list their creativity on chain forever to sell to the whole planet. Because that is what is possible here. 
So this nasty, and you're completely right. That's why at the beginning of this conversation, I was meditating. I'm like, shit, this is going to be a spiritual one. I know it. Because you, you hit it on the head, bro. It's all about the level of when, okay, when I came into Bitcoin, dude, with Kraywitz, we, we literally were looking for solutions, like, oh, solutions, solutions to, to like, we see all the statism, we see all this like encroachment of government and like tyranny all around us. So we're looking for solutions. And when we find Bitcoin, dude, we, we we come at it from a very like pure place, really. Like, um, and so for us, it was really easy to see it, to desire that. So for me, it, it really catches me off guard in big crypto history when I hear a Samsung mouse saying Bitcoin's not for poor people. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, that's so what Army said too, right? He says the yeah. world's not fair. The other 99% can get fucked. He's he's final, he's on the final exponent. But here's the thing: it's sad, every it's one sad. of us. Every one of us desires a better life. So if you can only create a better life for yourself and the other already holders and whatever, then the other 99% will constantly be thinking about counter-revolutionary things. So the best way to stay at the top of a pyramid is to make the other people realize that they cannot get it better anywhere else. As long as you're creating a system where I can't participate because I don't have five dollars to pay a transaction fee, but you are already there at the top. Then I will always be thinking, how do I create a new game? And be that's the top. right, that's right. And 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 fuck it, bro. This is it, man. I just I can't believe. Like that's why it's not final. That's why it's not final. It is only final. Like even if, like I said, you know what you're not doing if you wake up in ten years from a coma. And you have you lost all your coins. You know what you're not doing in that world post hyperbitcoinization is you're not going to try and start another blockchain. Of course not. That's fucking stupid. It always has been. Because you're 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 going to in one or two hours be able to procure all the wealth that you're going to want in your lifetime. And so the fact that yes, factually, someone else has more coins than you, and you may not like that for some reason potentially, but as long as you have your health, as long as you have, uh, you know, family, love, whatever, time, you have lots of time, then uh, you, you're not going to go waste that time trying to defeat the system. You don't accept that it's actually final. So when ARMY says it's final, already is final, what a BTC is final, I will give you this. If you can scale BTC Yes, and I actually will agree it's final. Then I'll be the guy that right. wakes up in a post-Bitcoin world with no private keys, and I'll accept that that's final. But Correct. Un until you show me with math that that ledger is working as cheap as BSV, as fast as BSV, I cannot accept that it's final. Not because correct. you're not leveraging the blockchain to scale it because the blockchain doesn't have the scaling built in. You're still leveraging human nature and human coordination to try and scale that ledger, no matter how large that ledger is right now, no matter how much value is locked into that ledger right now. And because you rely on human beings, the real zero to one moment that Army keeps on talking about, the real zero to one is the fact that we were even able to scale at one time. The fact that Bitcoin was invented and we had one time scaling. The fact that you're trying to tell me the thing that's final is the thing that's going to scale the second time, like BTC will be the second ledger to scale like BSV. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna bet on that. So he thinks already is final because it's first. Well, I'm just gonna tell you that BSV is the first chain in the world to perpetual scaling. So I'm gonna bet on first is first on that front. For sure, bro. Just uh, putting on new AirPods, but yeah, dude. I completely agree with you, Jack, 100%, dude. And and that's what I said to, you know, like, you know, um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you, dude. Like, the only way that ARMY would be 100% correct is if they have to scale BTC. They have no other choice. Yeah, but in the back of his mind, it's like, well, if they do scale BTC, now BTC Satoshi's become the exponent. It's not already anymore. Correct. It becomes it, it, it becomes like BSV, Correct. which won't happen. It won't happen. That's the thing. That's the the, yeah. the black pill. Is it won't happen? BTC won't scale. Um, there's stuff. I mean, you were you were you were a BTC holder. I was a BTC holder. 
Yep. We just swallowed a black pill on the very first block of the fork. Yep. These other people have to take the same pill at some later point in time. That's true. There's no, there's, there's no other pill. This is the pill. This is, this is not my project. I didn't invent B, BTC. I didn't invent BSV. I didn't do any of this stuff. I didn't invent ordinals. I didn't come up with Ordi. I didn't come up with Bitmap. I didn't do any of these things. All I am, I am, is just like an observer of what's happening. But I, I am very recogni- cognizant of the fact that Ordi has done fabulously well, right? And there are games within games. Ordi is playing the game of sucking liquidity from BTC from within. BSV is playing the game of sucking the infrastructure away from BTC over to BSV. Now, at different points in time, we might look stupid or dumb, myself included, for thinking which game is going to be more dominant. You know, Ethereum is playing a game of, oh, well, you don't have smart contracts right now. Well, maybe I can get off to a fast start with ERC20s and whatever before you have a fork and get BSV. Right. Right. So so that game is like, well, are you willing to wait for Bitcoin to have smart contracts? Are you willing to wait for ordinals? Or will you start doing JPEGs and NFTs on Ethereum to start with? So the, for the people who bet on that game, they profited immensely buying CryptoPunks at $1 riding that exponent to 100 grand, 500 grand each, right? Before there was a Bitcoin frog on BTC. You know what I mean? So right. there are different games and with games within a game. This is why I joke that you can't be bipolar, which is somehow a disease in this current world. Uh, you got to be tripolar, quadpolar, polar, as in be able to give a complete mind space to each of these separate games and take each of their separate games to its logical conclusion. If you aren't able to do that, then you're stuck in one game. You might be the expert at one game, but you don't even see your enemy because your enemy is not even inside this game. Your enemy is in another game. Now, can you explain because- that? Your enemy is in another game. What, what do you mean by that? As in like... You, if you understood that uh, Ethereum can do smart contracts and you did CryptoPunks, you're right. You've beaten everything on Ethereum. Correct. There's yes. no NFT collection that can beat CryptoPunks. Is the first NFT collection. It is the most prestigious art ever on Ethereum. Right. But if you only took that position and when ordinals came out you didn't come to do btc ordinals you didn't go do some solana then you lost at these other games that were created i see correct yes 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 and and so yeah and so you could be right that ordi is the best play inside the game that's called bitcoin inside the on-chain on btc chain game ordi is the best exponent but you're telling me it's final. But all I can say is it's final inside of BTC. But is BTC itself final? And if you're telling me, well, then why would I hold already? Why am I even doing this? You're telling me this whole thing is a waste of time. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not a waste of time if you think of it as a way to extract value to go to another game. Like if, if all humans are going to live on Mars in the future, is it a waste of time to be living on Earth right now? No. no. Maybe you want to have resources on Earth so you can be on one of the first rocket ships to Mars if, you, if that's what you want. Y- y- you know what I mean? So sure. th- we are all playing different games for different reasons. Other people are playing BTC games to extract fiat. They want right. to sell their BTC or their already to get more dollars so they can go use the dollars to buy properties and buy homes, uh, sorry, buy cars and flex and buy Rolexes and flex that game. They want to use this as a tool to win at the fiat game. Right. But if you're in the fiat game and you don't use Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana as a tool to win the fiat game, then you're going to a nine to five job trying to earn fiat to win at the fiat game, which is obviously a much slower way to win, waiting for 10 years to get a promotion to VP and whatever. That's a much slower way to win than if you went to play the Bitcoin game and came back to fiat. Right. Correct. So there's multiple games going on. Each game has a different growth rate. And the winner 
is able to play in all games at the same time, which is a which is a mistake that we made, which is like, oh, we thought BSV is the final game. Let's just go play over there. We don't have to care about what's going on in crypto. Let's just hate on crypto. I didn't yeah. hate on crypto, but I joined a community that was perceived as hating on crypto because Craig Wright wanted to sue everyone and all this other stuff, which gave us the perception, which is what gave you the costly signal of kind of pseudo being canceled by crypto because it was perceived that we weren't respectful of the other games. Correct. Yeah. Were, I, I, and I had to, um, you know, to, to create the crypto vigilante, I, I literally had to um, bring analysts that completely, re, you know, are, are of that play the other games more fully. Right. Um, yeah. So I had to, I so, was obliged to. Yes. Yeah. So there is still a purpose to playing these games, even if it's not final for you. How, how can I, hate on you as a BTC holder if you're telling me your goal is to sell your BTC at 100k in order to you know buy a house for your family like I, I can't hate on that that no, you're gonna exit so. your BTC you can't so why do you think it's useless to be in Ordi in order to have more BSVs is there a problem like you want to hold on to Ordi forever but how come you're the one who's going to sell the Ordi to buy a Ferrari or something. Isn't that, isn't that ditching Ordi also? Like, so there's games within a game. And I just think that it's most likely that BSV Satoshis are the final game because it's going to be the perpetually the most efficient machine, the most efficient ledger. And therefore, if you care about your upside the most, staying in that game the longest is actually better instead of hopping to other games. So do you, Jack, do you think that, um, so you do think this awareness towards BSV will happen faster than we think? You really, sh you, you, that's how, that's what you, hey, can you give me one second, man? One second, please. Let me uh, change the, um, let me, I, was, uh, I was there. The, um, no one problem. Second, please, sir. One second, please. The other one's completely died. One second, please. Hello, Jack. Can you please say something? One second, please. One second, please. Um, yeah. Hello. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I that. yeah. I'm back. So, so yeah. So you think that that this awareness, because you know the conditioning that we talked about is very powerful. Uh, those conditionings are very powerful. Um, do you think um people will naturally gravitate towards this more like higher vibration or do you think they will just be forced by market pressure to be flushed into this world mm. i think you just need a few people to reach that vibration like i said i already believe one person in their mind can create a bigger economic output than the current 8 billion people can create in total. Not because that one mind is smarter, but they can leverage this thing called the on-chain economy. So it doesn't need everyone to wake up at the same time. The few people can wake up the others as we go. So I definitely do think, would you not say as of now, there's at least 50, 100 people that can follow or want to follow, who want to watch these shows to learn about how they can think in a more Bitcoin native way. Look, look, at, the, look at the video counts of the interviews that we've done. They're up to like 3,000 views, 5,000 views. Right. So that's plenty of people, in my opinion. And that's just on YouTube. Yes, correct. Yeah, so you know, there's there's a lot of there's a sense of peace about all of this uh, that I can't shake off. And the moment we started talking, that's like the first thing that really um, was apparent to me is, is that um, there's a lot of clarity now in my mind, and more clarity than I had before. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I came into this interview with an eagerness to figure out how to, you know, impart this knowledge and this awareness to other people. But I'm, I leave this interview 
with um, a sense of peace, knowing that um, they will understand this inevitably. And that the best yep. thing that I could do right now is just do my part and and just, uh, you know, again, not financial advice, but I'm personally going to be dollar cost averaging BSV as much as I can. That's literally what I'm going to do, guys. I, to do otherwise is to commit intellectual suicide. Um, as per, um, I, I don't care. And I don't think Jack cares about what happens with Craig Wright in the Copa trial. I really don't care. Um, either case, whether he wins or loses, I personally see it as a bullish case for BSV um, because the technology is that is just that powerful um, that the strides in effect, whether he win or loses is going to just be up overall net positive for BSV and people sure. will just become more aware of it. What, what are your thoughts on, on that Jack? Yeah. More attention equals more eyeballs on it and more people thinking about it. And uh, yeah, like, even COVID wakes up a few people, you know, uh, everything wakes up people. Like if you sit at the finish line, anything that happens in the world is bullish for the finish line. Cause you're kind of accelerating people towards that finish line. Even if it's bad, good, wake up because of negative news, wake up because of positive progress, people are waking up. But if you are the number one thing in the current game, but you're not going to be at the finish line, then like Apple shares. Like I don't know any teenager that is excited about investing in Apple shares. Right? Because like I'm I'm on I'm on my phone scrolling TikTok all day. If I'm a teenager, like dopamine addicted like crazy. This person is not gonna then invest in a sh company share that's only available between 9 and 4 p.m. Now, why hasn't Apple shares and other stock markets gone down in the face of the behavior of the younger generation? Well, right now, Gen, Gen Alpha and Gen Z are just beginning to work. I mean, Gen Zs are beginning to work. So they don't have money to invest necessarily because they're on a web two platform that doesn't make money. It's just d dopamine addiction on Instagram, on TikTok. It's not generating money per se for most people. And then the people that do work like the Gen Z or the very young millennials, even though they wouldn't want to invest in the stock market because they're, they're also dopamine addicted on TikTok, someone is investing for them via these pension funds and like institutional mutual funds, like institutional investors, financial advisors. The people who work at those firms are of the boomer age, are of the Gen X age, are the older people. So those people aren't the ones on TikTok. Those are not the ones who need the dopamine of the 24 hour trading. They're, they're the ones still going to a nice cushy office in downtown Manhattan, Wall Street and doing this stuff. They have 30 years of work experience on Wall Street, 20 years of experience investing in institutional money. So they're still investing in these things called stocks and companies and whatever. But the switch happens when you make a Web3 product like TikTok in, in dopamine, except you are actually making, you know, buying JPEGs. You are uh, like flipping bitmaps. You are by inscribing things as you tap on on the phone these are some of the products that or swap ordinals wallet units that started to make and as it gets to doggy market you've, you've used doggy market it's like faster it's like quicker and then as you get to using on bsv it's even faster so all of a sudden these people are going to be directly investing the fruits of their fiat jobs or they'll start doing crypto jobs. They'll start doing on-chain jobs. And so their money is just going to stay on chain and get reinvested on chain and, and allocated on chain. Their money never actually goes into the mutual fund, never actually goes into the pension fund. So now BlackRock's asset under management, inflation adjusted, will go towards zero. So BlackRock itself 
the stock market itself has no money in it anymore to even allocate to the ETF. And the people that are on this dopamine web three type on-chain apps, the masses of the Gen Alpha and the Gen Zs, they can't all click buttons on the BTC network because it costs $50 per button click right now. Soon a hundred, soon 500, soon a thousand dollars per button click. But right now people button click thousands of times on TikTok. They're going to button click thousands of times on chain. So what is happening is you don't need the BlackRock ETF to be for BSV. You don't need Udi, a boomer, to go to BSV. You don't need these people to go to BSV because the new people are going to come. They're going to stop routing their money through that whole financial system for their retirement, and they're going to go directly earn their way and active, be active on their phones, on their VRs, whatever, straight into the on-chain ledger that can host all sorts of games, creativity, art, on-chain. That is the that is what's going to happen, you know? And it's going to happen really, really fast. Dude, you know, it's crazy that uh, the, a creator token uh, has not been launched on, 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 on BSV. When, when they do it, whoever cooks up a creator token, like friend.tech, which is actually an idea that came out of Cambrian. Uh, I have a feeling there was a mole in the room that took it to coin, took this idea to Coinbase. That's just me. It's me and my conspiratorial yeah. mind. I think there was a mole in the room that took that idea to Coinbase because they were even using our own on-chain rhetoric for their, for, for their commercial. But I digress. What I meant to say is, is that um, a friend.tech on BSV uh, would be so much more, um, you said, I like the word you use, convergent for everyone involved. Whereas friend.tech in its design is very divergent. You know what I mean? So whenever yeah. someone figures that out, that recipe, because um, you're talking about it, uh, Instagram and I was like, you know what, dude, like it's lacking. Like you gotta, you gotta bring that, someone's gotta bring that into into Bitcoin's original design, like that Instagram, that TikTok experience, and whoever figures that out and combines, yeah, we 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 don't need to over, all be dude. Satoshi. You need one. You don't need. We don't all need to be Satoshi. You need one Satoshi, and now we can all use Bitcoin. We don't all need to be Mark Zuckerberg. You need one Mark Zuckerberg, and now we're all on Facebook, right? We don't. You don't need everyone to be into automobiles and stuff. You need one guy, which is Elon Musk, and now we can all drive Teslas. So. When it comes to this creativity that's happening on chain, if you're watching this and you're like, I'm not creative, that's not for me. When you're investing in something like a BSV, you're just betting that somebody will be creative. Not everyone needs to be creative. As long as somebody is creative on chain wait, and that chain works that fast, it's just wait, game over. Jack, you said something like BSV. I don't, I can't find anything like BSV. So you're going to have to tell me what this other thing is. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's if there's just no other BSV, thing, bro. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Yeah. So, 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 some people like to hold on to fiat or hold on to BTC or whatever it is until they see signs that this is happening on BSV. I like to hold on to the thing that can capture human creativity right now if it needed to. And then I'm willing to switch away from BSV if I see signs that some other network is better than BSV. So we work in reverse, you see? You're waiting for the creativity thesis to work. I'm waiting for some other thing to steal away the creativity potential of BSV as my risk, as the reason why I would sell the BSV. You know, you know what I mean? And so 100%. because of that, and because we're starting at different points in time and different places in time, then you could be like, well, see, look, you're down 90%. Your, your shit coin is down 90%. Look at this. My shit coin is up. Because you're trying to take the money from the fiat. You're trying to take the BlackRock ETF money. You're trying to get the Gen Z, Gen Alpha, uh, their future salary. But right now they don't work. You're getting the millennial salary, the millennials pension plan. You're trying to get that money over to your coin called BTC. I'm trying to get the future Gen Alpha, Gen Z creativity over to the chain. You see, these are two different periods of time. And you could be correct for another five years, for another 10 years. 
But this is why this interview can be watched in 50 years. Because this will be the actual, what is happening in the world today? What is the actual battle today between the different blockchains that is, a, I think, historically interesting to look at? Whereas if you go listen to a Twitter space, look at what these people are doing. Oh, I got a wizard hat. Like I I just raised money from some VC. This is very temporal. There's no long-term significance of that conversation, in my opinion. 100%. 100%. Is there anything that you would like to leave this trilogy of of an interview? Oh. what idea would you like to leave for the audience? Yeah, I think it's been a decade uh, for me in this industry. Uh, outside of, you know, already committed to this interview for from from last month. Um, I, I as I said earlier in the show, I'm looking forward to wrapping up more of the companies that we've built, more of the products that we've built, and and winding those down because I think I've had. The products make less of an impact at this point. Uh, now that there's replacement wallets, replacement marketplaces happening on BSP, we're not the only ones building on order lock anymore. We're not the only free to mint token service anymore. We're not the only, um, yeah, uh, wallet with tokens. Um, now that there's other people doing this, they might not, in some ways, not do it as well, or their their products are a little bit narrower in scale scope, but. I, I think my interviews with you and other places in Twitter space have actually made more of an impact on the products at this point in terms of Bitcoin hyper-Bitcoinization. And now I don't even feel like doing that many more interviews because I think as someone who is interested in the frontier, just out of curiosity, I no longer think even the idea of dollar cost, cost averaging into BSV or holding BSV or locking BSV. I don't even think this is technically at the frontier anymore. Um, and so I've freed up a lot of my time in the last few months uh, from needing to do customer service or running products, all sorts of products. Um, and as I look at the world around me, I'd love to go uh, do certain things during the daytime, but everyone's working nine to five. Hmm. They they can't. Right, correct. Like yes, you want to you, you go golfing with somebody. It's like, we'll golf on Sunday. Well, I'm like, well, why can't we golf on Wednesday? Right. Like, so what I see now is the trade-off between spending your time trying to evangelize Bitcoin and push Bitcoin forward and scaling debate, this is the right Bitcoin, this is not the right Bitcoin, this is like the way to do Bitcoin, this is the product, you got to do tokens this way, you got to do tokens that way, you got to do this. Is it enterprise or is it consumer? That era, I think, is behind me. And the new era is to do the most with the time that you still have left. Um, whatever those goals may be, spiritually, family raising, friendships, art, learning, whatever that is. And those things might be enabled by Bitcoin, might be enabled by certain apps that I predict will come out in the coming years, but it's unlikely that I'll be the builder of those apps, I predict. Um, But the funny thing is, even if I'm going to build those things, the best way to set yourself to build those things is to expect yourself not to be the one building it. That way you will serendipitously come to the thought that maybe I will go back in the game. Maybe I will do this. Because if you already know that today I need to add this feature to OrSwap, tomorrow I need to add that feature to RelayX and whatever, then you're not fully willing to open your mind to what is the best use of your time, even commercially, you know what I mean? So, you know, we were very busy running Orswell, but we had the time and the presence of mind to be aware of something like a bitmap coming out or aware of already coming out, aware of like maybe Dojino should be done because we weren't clogged into the day-to-day customer service, make this product better, make this feature, make that feature. We had that presence of mind, which obviously paid off very well financially, right? 
So I guess to conclude, it's just now that money has been solved, hyper-Bitcoinization has been solved, time becomes ever more important. So if you can get out of a nine to five, if you can get out of certain Zoom calendars and Google calendars and commitments, got to do this at this time, got to do that at that time and have like, you're not taking five day, five minutes out of your day to go meditate. You're not necessarily even meditating the whole 12 hours. But if you have no time commitment, then even if you're busy doing something, you're doing it out of love and passion while your mind is staying actually in a very meditative state while you're doing that. If you can achieve that kind of presence and being so in the present moment, then the the ideas that what is my status in society, what is my power in society, what is my bank account, all these things will go away. You won't spend your time thinking about that You'll be looking at the person serving you uh, tennis across from you, and you'll be fully concentrated on returning to serve. You'll be lining up your uh, bunker shot and fully in that bunker shot. You're not on the golf course because you're here to do business networking. You know, One of the things I like to say is that the idea of business in the physical world is gone. There is no networking. You could have the most LinkedIn connections in the world. The chances that one of them would be the person who starts BRC20s or ordinals or bit, bitmaps is zero. It's nearly zero. You could go arrange a private uh, lounge reception cocktail networking event. You could invite anyone you want. You can invite uh, Scarlett Johansson, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, whatever. The chances that the next great thing in this world comes from that room, even if I give you a free invite of 50 people of anyone you want, you can invite Bill Clinton, you can invite Donald Trump, whoever you want. The chances a person in that room will be the alpha builder of the next block is nearly zero. So in that world that you've enabled 8 billion people to create, um, if you're going to spend time in the physical world, you're going to spend it out of love, out of passion, out of friendship. You're not spending it because you think they can be a ladder for you to get it somewhere. They could do a business. So So not only am I confused right now in this presence of mind, why people work nine to five, even I realize even the people that don't work nine to five that that control their own calendar that they're their own boss they work for themselves they're still busy running around meetings golf courses at some country club talking business they're still talking business they're not talking creativity they're talking do deals oh there's a new BRC twenty project Jack you want to get in it's a three million valuation you want to get in I'm just like no they're like why not it's so so hot right now. They're going to be huge. And I'm just like, well, I didn't, I, what do you mean they're going to be huge? BRC20 has been around for like nine months or something. Like, I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm confused why it would be huge right now. Like, you see, the world is so consumed by money that even removing people from nine to five, they're still trying to do business. Uh, and I, I think that time becomes most important and that we live in a world where if I'm talking to you, you have my full attention, Raphael. I'm not trying to get you to buy more Bitcoins, buy my bags. I'm not trying to sell you something. There's no more business in the physical world. All business happens on chain. And all ideas are instantly connected to the rest of humanity. So that if you're meeting someone for lunch, you're not doing business with them. It's because you actually want to have lunch with them and talk to them. That's a, that's a realization that I think is going to sink in um, post hyper Bitcoinization. You know, I was thinking that we should, if we ever do like a, a crypto conference, it shouldn't ever be a Bitcoin conference. It should just be more like a hangout with cool right. people, cool teachers, you know, like more yeah. really high vibration, dude, of like, we're not going to talk about that here. We're, we're going to focus on this, you know. 
or just like yeah, enjoying you have a, the you present have a moment. Yoga, yoga, yoga teacher, someone teaching martial arts, someone might be a piano teacher, someone else teaching guitar. You're gonna someone teaching a fish, someone teaching how to use a rifle. You're gonna have like a thing that's about. We obviously were indoctrinated somehow, but we don't need to be. But now we still need to be educated. We still have hobbies. We still have passions. What are those? So it's like, what's the best practices for for raising a child? All these things. It's like all the things that um, you want, you know, can be disrupted, can be done in a non conventional way because of Bitcoin. What are those things? How do I learn about them? How do we share those things? Instead of how do we grow Bitcoin? The grow Bitcoin part has been solved. Yeah. Sounds a lot like an Arcapulco, actually. You should come and speak <laughs> there. You literally should come we'll speak see. there. I I, I, we'll I, I just, when I go there, I don't talk to anyone about business or anything. I go straight to the health and wellness people. And I just go to all the workshops and everything. I'm just there. I, I just take in as much information on health and, health and wellness. Talk to gurus from all over the world. That's why I'm there. My my mind is in the present moment. That's why I'm there. I'm not there for anything else but that. Um, people but want to we talk can to have about that. crypto. It's like, you can, no, 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 no. Yeah. But you can bring that practice into your whole life now, not just during Anacropoco. That's like my insight. Thank that you. That is not Appreciate a break. It. That's not a break from your regular life. That is the life of a post Bitcoin person. And that's 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 what I want to do. Um, it's just it's it's so interesting that um, being involved in crypto for so long for me personally is very um, it's like a, a habit now to go back to it. Right? It's a habit, and I've been conditioned to like you know let's save Bitcoin. But at this point, it's like it's already been taken care of. Like, um, like, it's just that awareness that that's why it's good to have these conversations, uh, because it, it, it really, um, the, the reality is already there. It's already been manifested. Um, the only thing is, is that sometimes we can forget. And so it's good to have these conversations and I look forward to having conversations with you in the future, whether it be on YouTube or on X spaces where we can just like talk about whatever, bro. Because yeah, this is not the end of the conversations. This is the end of the hyper Bitcoinization trilogy. That's all. Of try of getting to hyper Bitcoinization because now yeah, we, we are Correct. in hyper Bitcoinization. Correct. And and it's just like, you know, Jack, I, I, I you know, we started this and you mentioned 24 hours, and a lot of people, a lot of BTC maxes were like, oh, it's been more than 24 hours. So <laughs> What are your thoughts on on that? You said it's going to happen within 24 hours, and I think it's important to emphasize what you meant. You meant that he, what he meant was that the S, that this S part of the S curve, that will happen. That's steep within 24 hours. When do you foresee just that go, that just, S happening? The, the just the just go up? back, just go back and watch the first video again. There's no need okay. to talk about it, okay. and uh, you know. Hey, you, I think, I think the proof is in the pudding. The people who get it, get it. And, uh, many people understand the 24 hours now at, at the time they did not understand it. And so I lean on the fact that the people have come to me and said, Hey, I, I totally get it now. And like, if I build a product and it doesn't go, doesn't have users in 24 hours, uh, I'm shutting it down. So they've taken that 24 hour approach and applied it to many different things in their Bitcoin endeavors, not just a symbolic Bitcoinization in 24 hours. And uh, it's just a nice frame of mind, you know, just to say each day is very important. So why would we want to build something that takes six months after you launch to have users? And so right. having people trained on that mindset is actually going to end up manifesting in this 24 hour effect yeah so thanks a lot awesome. for having me on i wish Dude. you and everyone listening a great 2024 i cannot wait to to know and find out about what was built as a small inspiration from this conversation we had uh whether you know it was because of it or not i just know that we're all connected you know so uh that's my motivation to put this out there uh is if somebody 
very talented is hearing this and it helps them build something um, in a slightly different way, helps them think of a different idea. Like that, that's, that's, it's been a very good use of my time. So thanks a lot. Yo, one thing that Jack mentioned that I don't know if he wants to explain what it is in passing, he mentioned an order lock order book. That was one of Jack and his teams, um, the relay teams, like probably greatest contribution to Bitcoin, in my opinion. I suggest that you guys look up and understand what that means. If Jack wants to give uh, the ones to, to uh, go, go look it up. What it means to have what you call it, an open order book, right? On chain. Yeah, it, it means the order book sits on Bitcoin. The assets that you've posted for sale sits on Bitcoin. All the buys and sells are processed by Bitcoin miners. There is no intermediary. The exchange is Bitcoin itself. And the interfaces, the websites, that, the apps you go to to trade assets on BSV, those are the equivalent of the iPhone case. Bitcoin is the iPhone. The value accrual goes to the assets, goes to Bitcoin as the ledger. The value accrual doesn't continuously go to the platform the websites that you visit that is our contribution it took a team of developers including black including developer uh, uh who's anonymous um that happened on chain in 2020 first for the run protocol but because it's written in script it works for any other token protocol on bitcoin and has now been adapted uh over to ordinals uh, on BSV by Mr. David Case. And I'm happy to say that the different marketplaces, Firesats, uh, Babel.market, uh, and I think Tales of Schwa, all three marketplaces, and I'm sure every marketplace from now will all be using this order lock, um, which really came to be in 2020 and now has gained a widespread attention. Similar to how BTC Ordinals trade on PSBTs, which is non-custodial indeed, but it just means that the platforms can't rug your ordinals, but the the right to buy and sell the ordinals remains with the signature that is held by the marketplace. Whereas here, the item itself that's listed for sale is listed on Bitcoin itself, and it's not listed via a marketplace that is profound it means that we are creating a single order book for millions of interfaces to come you might have an interface yourself you might in the future be able to talk to chat gp10 and uh sorry house cleaning um the it means that uh in the future, we'll be on a single order book uh, with hundreds of millions of interfaces. And you may be able to interact with AI to create your own interface, to look for your own things. There will be trillions of different items on sale uh, every day, digital virtu uh, and physical happening on a single marketplace. So if you think about the history of humanity, the Silk Road marketplace, the physical Silk Road marketplace, the Grand Bazaar in Turkey, moving on to Amazon and uh, Craigslist, uh, cer certain websites on the internet that you can buy and sell Airbnb. You're talking about Bitcoin now being the central marketplace for all things on Earth and other planets, wherever you want, and having the ability to access those goods and services from any interface that taps into Bitcoin. Like this is the future, is the finality. And like, I cannot imagine like the amount of creativity that will be unleashed. It will, it will make the industrial revolution look like um, a little, little, little fingerprint. Thank you, Jack. Thank you guys for tuning in. Stay on chain and lock it up, baby. Peace, love, anarchy. Now we are dealing with a possible world war. Some will say we are already in a world war.
My condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny. It really sucks. I'm really sorry. But it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day. And so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad. You know, everyone needs this information. People need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto. 